I will introduce to you the panelists in the studio currently. Uh, from my extreme left, we have Mr. Joe Jackson. He's the Chief Operations Officer of Dalex Finance. And next, we have Professor John Gachi. He is the Dean of Business School at the University of Cape Coast. So these are the two guests in studio currently. We're expecting two more. When they come, we we'll do the need for. You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. It's good to Same see to you. you. Uh, Happy New Year. It's good to be alive. I know. Yes. So how has, how has the past week been? I mean, the Christmas and... You know, well, the uh, and if, if, you, if you live in, in Accra, you, can't fail to be imp you couldn't fail to be impacted by the, all that was happening with the year of return and the traffic and all the other bits and pieces. But I suppose life was returning back to normal from tomorrow. Right, sure. And Prof, in Cape Coast, how was that? Well, was, was the buzz also in Cape Coast? I didn't see much of it. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't see much very well, but Accra was, I mean, buzzing all over. But anyways, again, welcome. It's good to have you. So as indicated, we'll be looking um, at the financial sector. Obviously, a major sector to look at when it comes to 2019. And of course, we're doing the review of 2019. Lots of conversations around that sector. In fact, both of you have been on um, the show on several occasions where we've had calls to discuss a whole lot of issues. So Taking a look back at events of 2019, focusing on the financial sector is, I mean, obviously one that would bring back memories of, you know, conversations that we've had and everything. But I'm sure definitely there are new areas that, you know, would like to tread and in terms of lessons learned and all that moving forward. So, Prof, I'll start with you. <clears throat> financial sector, overview of it, what happened, even before we go into the nuanced areas of, you know, the revocation of licenses and all of that? Well, I think uh, as far back as 2014, 2015, uh, the Bank of Ghana and the government at the time started a process of identifying uh, endemic problems within the financial sector mm -hmm. and preferring some solution to them. And I, I do know that that led to the promulgation of many laws, mm -hmm. including the fin um, financial services sector, basically for SEC. Uh, that also led to the promulgation of Act 930, that banks and specialized deposit-taking institutions act. Right. Uh, we also saw the promulgation of uh, uh, Depositor Protection Act, uh, which is supposed to give some insurance to depositors, depositors right. in case there is a uh, a problem in terms of uh, the institution going down. So that will provide some kind of uh, uh, protection Comfort. for the depositors. <clears throat> uh, so that began, and I will enter in 2017, uh, where at 930 was supposed to be implemented. Uh, but here again, uh, when you are managing a regulatory system, there are two approaches. We, we, have, we, we call it a, a rules-based approach and then principles-based approach. Now, if you want to take the rules-based approach, what it means is that this is what the law says. It doesn't matter whether that, uh, if I look at another uh, factor, I should have done it in a different, di different way uh, to reflect the interest of the economy, to reflect the interest of uh, entrepreneurs, and to reflect the interests of uh, depositors and uh, investors in the market. So principle-based approach actually look at that. Mm. You consider many factors uh, before you take a decision. So you don't stick to the letter of the law yes. necessarily. Yes. So we are not looking at positivist approach right. to, sure. the, to the law. Uh, we, we look at it comprehensively, uh, have an overview and then try to forecast into the future some of the possible effects of decisions mm -hmm. and what we should put in place to actually mitigate those effects. Uh, but in my opinion, that is not what has been uh, implemented. The principles based. Yes. You think we, we went with the rules based? Yes. Okay. So, and that is why we face a lot of challenges mm. because countries like Sweden in the early 1990s uh, use the principle-based approach. And, and, and before they started the process, they were aware of how much it would cost. 
they were aware of the number of jobs that will go down. They were aware of the institution that there is nothing that could be done about them except to allow them to go and how much the state will be spending. And they look at it from behavioral point of view, psychological point of view, mm -hmm. political point of view. And they are aware that managing a financial sector crisis uh, will actually involve politicians. So they brought on board uh, uh, representatives from politi uh, political parties in parliament to the team. They brought on board uh, labor unions. They brought on board uh, some other regulatory institutions mm. uh, so that they have a very clear view about what they were doing. And the moment they started, uh, there was nothing like the panic we were, we were talking about here because everybody was psyched up, everybody was involved. The constituency that would create problems all understood the situation mm. and they moved in one direction. That is not what we, we implemented here. And that is what created a lot of problems that will continue to be with us even in 20. Right. Now, talking about the Sweden example, you said <clears throat> they looked at it and considered that, well, this is what we had to do. There was no way we could, you know, save the situation or save certain institutions. So I saying that in our case, we could have saved some institutions. Oh, yes. Okay. See, when this thing started initially, uh, some of us indicated that, that it was the need to come up with an approach that will protect some of the indigenous banks. Mm -hmm. In fact, at that time, it was as if the Bank of Ghana was not the one <laughs> steering the affairs. You hear people from cabinet, you hear even Council of State members saying that uh, the only way for those banks that were facing difficulty is to go and merge. And they were talking of a merger as if it's a, a simple process that banks could just talk to another and the, and the Okay, next so now you're day. looking at the recapitalization yes. issue. So okay, what I'm trying to it, say right. is that we refuse to accept the fact that that was a different approach. Mm. But when we started and it was burning our fingers, we came back that, no, let us put some criteria to save about five of the indigenous. But that could have been done mm -hmm. two years down the line. Mm. Uh, but because we realized that the effect of that was going to be very precarious for the country, we came back and said, OK, let us put some measures uh, in place and, and say that this number of banks should be saved. Okay. And that also led to another problem. Right. Uh, that problem was to put in place that. Sure. Uh, uh, that GAT has its own. We'll, we'll definitely look at GAT because GAT in, its, <laughs> GAT in itself is, you know, an animal. Still, still born. It, well, yeah. It's, it's, it's a creature of its mm. own that we'll need to look at. So mm. let me go to um, Mr. Jackson here. Mr. Jackson, do you share Professor Gachi's um, perspectives or how he sees how this whole thing went? Talking about the fact that, you know, the rules based as against the principles based, talking about the Sweden example. Yeah. Could we have saved certain entities? It's a difficult one, I, I would say this, and it's, it's easy with hindsight mm -hmm. to talk about um, uh, what rules. What should have been done. What should have been done, that. rules based versus princi uh, the principle based. What I see in my mind, what happened was that each time, since, and we're talking way back, as far back as 20. Uh, 14, 14, 14 right. with each time they kicked the can down the road, mm -hmm. it made it a little bit more difficult to take a, a, a comprehensive view because the situation was getting dire. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to give the example of somebody who has diabetes and has a sore on his leg, and each time you postpone treatment, you're making, you're increasing the possibility that the uh, the person will have a leg cut off. Right. So my challenge really was that they waited a bit too long before taking action. Okay. And that cost in itself caused a lot of problems. Right. I actually think that most of the institutions that went down would have gone down anyway. Mm. 
that there were there were really a number of institutions that were there. With the, the of course, there are a few exceptions. There are one or two institutions where we could have a debate as to whether they should have gone down sure. or not. My biggest challenge is this: having taken that decision, right, mm -hmm. and and what did they, what did we really do to mitigate? the negative effect of a decision that I truly believe was necessary. He talks about the fear and panic. Till today, has there been even a concerted effort to address the fear and panic with the institutions, uh, with the public? You talk, we, we know that at the bottom of the pyramid, where the, the, the commercial banks are at the top of the pyramid, the bottom of the pyramid, you're talking about savings and loans, microfinance, etc. There's a severe liquidity crunch. Right. Has there been any program to provide liquidity to these institutions? Uh, is there any program? Because you see, the more what you're going to find happening is that some of these institutions are going to actually go into distress uh -huh. because of the liquidity crunch and their inability to attract uh, um, uh, funds and deposits. Even as we sit in the market, in that sector, microfinance, etc., there's already those who are deemed, the public has deemed some of us fit and will deal with us. The rest of them are in, in dire straits and the public perception is everything. And perception has dealt with some of the institutions and some of us have survived in the minds of the public and still deal with us. But, the, but some of these institutions that are in dire straits were deemed by the central bank to be solvent mm -hmm. and of good standing. So what have they done to protect those institutions, provide them with liquidity? Those institutions, they themselves said were of good standing. Mm. And that's that's the challenge. Right. And again, we then we have to drift into this issue of, are you going by the rules? And I have to borrow his, uh, uh, are you going by the rules or you're going by the principle that once I have I said you are in good standing, then I have to support you and make, sure you succeed. and make sure you succeed. For me, the problem is not those that have gone down already. That's done. Mm -hmm. It's those that are in existence mm -hmm. and what we are doing to make sure that, because you see, they do provide a real and necessary service to the bottom of the pyramid. Sure. And some of the seeming tension between fantastic macro numbers and uh, a, 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 a very uh, poor experience on the ground mm -hmm. is because on the ground, I always say that commercial banks lend to people who look like the CEO. It's true. They lend to the big organizations okay. and do big transactions and put money in government uh, 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 bills. Those who actually lend on the ground are in trouble. What are we doing? So when somebody, the plumber down the road, who has a contract to build six boreholes and needs financing? Who's going to help you out? Right. So those are those the are graphic the artist first. who's got a, a little contract and needs a, 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 a twenty thousand CDs, ten thousand CDs. Who's going to help him out? And that has an effect at the bottom. Right. So for me, the biggest challenge of last year was that okay, the cleanup was necessary. It has been done. But what are we doing to make sure that the institutions that survived, survived <laughs> and are deemed right. to be in good standing right. remain in good standing? Right. Because we can't... Listen, the worst thing that can happen to this market now is that even a single institution should go down. Right. That will destroy confidence for another uh, decade. Right. I mean, the, the, the Minister for Finance, I mean, in, 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 in several, you know, speeches he's delivered would say that, well, the cleanup has yielded positive results, talking about the fact that well, there's now a resilient financial sector. 
talking about increase in deposits and all. Of course, some, some have had cause to challenge such, you know, statements. But essentially, what we are hoping is that this whole process would yield a certain result. Otherwise, then, you, we would have, you know, um, th that whole purpose would have been defeated. And obviously, that isn't what we, we want. So the issue about what to do with the survivors, quote unquote, okay. is key. <coughs> Prof. Gachi, I know you want to come in, but let me quickly introduce our third panelist in the person of Professor Eric Osei Asibe. He's an economist and an associate professor um, with the economics department at the University of Ghana, Lagon. You're welcome, Prof. It's good to have you here. I'll come quickly to you, but um, Prof. Gachi wants to make uh, an intervention quickly. Yeah. Well, I think the difficulty about the confidence is, is, is it's all about the way we started the process. Two things. One, we were dealing with the matter as if it's a political issue. Oh, that, that, that's how you, 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 you saw it yes. play out. Secondly, why, why is that? secondly, the regulatory institutions were not consistent. So, like he said, you published to the public that uh, institution A is solvent, is good, is clean. Mm -hmm. Deal with them. After three months, it is part of the list you collapse. Because the individual or the public, they don't have insight into what you are seeing. Mm. You are the one seeing the figures. Mm -hmm. So if you tell me institution A is strong, deal with that institution. And after three months, you yourself, you announce that you collapse that institution. And that, and that couldn't have happened within three months. No. no. Exactly. So no. at so, the time, three months ago, when you were saying... They're good, yes. deal with them. Yes. On what basis were you saying that? That's the second that, 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 thing. Right. So, so it's like uh, there's a drop in trust, confidence, that the regulatory institution have to take time right. to, to build. They mm. need to carry us along. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not treating the issue of confidence as serious as we should. Uh, we should. Right. Uh, right. Some of the institutions are closer to the economic activities of the public. Mm -hmm. They are taken away. Mm. Especially the rural economy. I don't know who is financing exactly. them now. Nobody. We'll, we'll uh, look at that. The rural banks situation. Yes. It's very, very important as well because I think the bank, the Bank of Ghana, when it announced that um, it had completed with the financial sector cleanup, did indicate that they were going to work with the ARB Apex Bank. See, that's another to, problem. Uh, the way they announced it, <laughs> as if they are fighting <laughs> with the institution. Yeah. And, and, the the and, next and, one and, we and are going. And it's, it's, it's a very important mm. comment he's making. Mm. Mm -hmm. When, when you come out and you come out like Rambo and you say, uh, the next episode, I'm coming, <laughs> coming after, after you. Coming after you. That puts a whole spin to this that really need not be. Mm. Because the, the regulator has a duty to ensure stability. That's one of the first things in you. Right. So statements like that really don't help the confidence at all. Right. Thanks. Uh, Prof. Ozesbe, you're welcome once again. Thank you. So, I mean, you, you, you've heard your co-panelists here uh, looking at the regulator. I think right now the regulator is in focus because the sector cleanup has happened. We ought to have learned lessons. Otherwise, like I said earlier, this whole process and the money that has gone into it would be, you know, would have, would have been rendered um, 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 useless, for lack of a better word. So how do we ensure that? And I'd want to make reference to the statement that the Bank of Ghana released when it announced that, you know, they had concluded with the banking sector cleanup. It says that it would remain vigilant, intensify on-site examinations, et cetera, to ensure that the surviving institutions remain resilient. Now, how do we take this kind of, it's, a, it's laudable that they say they'll do this, but how do we take this seriously when, you know, we don't necessarily see anything being done in respect of the regulator, i.e. persons who superintended over a certain period, which led to the situation we found ourselves in, which necessitated the cleanup in the first place. Because obviously, when you're discussing this financial sector cleanup, the complicity of the regulator cannot be ignored. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, and let me say Happy New Year to my co panelists and uh, to your viewers. Yes, I, I think uh, I share some of the viewpoint of my co panelists. Mm -hmm. um, the banking sector plays a very crucial role in an economy, and therefore, I mean, its activities uh, impacts on the 
uh, economic development sure. of this country, either directly or indirectly. And so um, issues of employment, issues of growth, uh, issues of sectoral uh, productivity and all of that comes down to the banking sector. And uh, in the process of doing that, the payment system, taking deposits and advancing debt and credit, they might take some risk. Uh, this risk, uh, financial risk, operational risk, and okay. credit risk, and all of that. And so it's crucial, and it is for no, uh, just, uh, it's for a purpose why the banking sector is the most regulated sector across the globe because of some of these activities. And therefore, the, the regulator has an, uh, a big responsibility uh, to ensure that the banking sector is stabilized, it's well capitalized, it's sound, and it's able to play its intermediation role as is expected. So if there's any regulatory lapses, uh, that definitely would mean that some of these problems could arise. Sure. Uh, sometimes it might not only be regulatory lapses, the uh, corporate governance systems okay. that uh, uh, were in place uh, could also have uh, Occasion some of the things that have happened, but it has I, an, it has it has some relation with regulation as well. That's right, because yes. if the regulator is doing its work in terms of ensuring well, well, that, well, uh, I mean, the regulator often is uh, is um, a post activity action. You know, I mean, the 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 some of this only comes to the fore when the the Even harm has already, already been done. Mm. All right, and so. It, what means is that that is why there are rules, and when you don't comply with the rules, the regulator come in to enforce the rules, uh, to make sure that you comply with the rules, and there are clear sanction regime that the regulator has to apply uh -huh. in that regard. So for me, I think that as uh, uh, one of my co-panelists said, this is a uh, necessary evil. It was something that was required because if you look at the asset quality review that was done in 2015, sure. there was a significant deterioration that required some action. Uh, the key question is, I mean, it, there are several ways of killing a cat. Mm -hmm. You know, some could just wait for uh, two years, three years. Some say, okay, let's do it now. And how do we do it? All of that are very necessary. But at the end of the day, the end goal is to ensure that there's stability within the banking yes. sector. So doing that and giving all the cleanup that has happened, as you rightly said, the most important thing is how do we ensure sustained stability over a long period of time and right. how do we restore confidence uh, within the banking sector. I think that uh, uh, pursuant to that, a number of actions have been taken, uh, much more tightened prudential regulations uh, have been introduced. Uh, the central bank has passed some uh, laws. There, there have been the deposit uh, 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 protection scheme that tried to protect the interest of depositors, and therefore also tightening the corporate governance regime uh, of these banks. Mm. And many of these are very important. The on-site examinations mm -hmm. and supervision okay. and all of that are quite but ongoing. But those, those, yeah. those, those were duties. That right. the regulator had to play. Yeah. Anyways, even before. Yeah. You yes. Know, so he, now it has so realized what, this, yeah. and so, so that that's a it's a wake up <coughs> call to the right. regulator, and mm -hmm. so that was one of the good things that that happened, and mm -hmm. you could see that this is uh, affecting all the other regulators. They have all started, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, being more proactive other than being passive mm. in, in their uh, activities. Let me, let me so you could sure. really see that it has some positive impact in that direction with regard to our institutional buildings and all of that. Okay, now let's look at this deposit, depositors protection right. scheme. Okay. And, you know, there's a body that has been inaugurated. To how are, what, what, is their, what is their role and how, how is that to guarantee the, how do I put it, the, the comfort that depositors are looking for. Mm -hmm. Because I'm looking at a situation where you have almighty Bank of Ghana, the regulator right. itself. Are we saying the regulator itself cannot necessarily do the job to the extent that we now need, you know, to set up this entity right. to, 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 to do what exactly? To do what that, I mean, to do that which the Bank of Ghana cannot do. Well, the Bank of Ghana has its unique role mm -hmm. uh, of uh, providing supervisory, uh, prudential supervisory, and also ensuring the conduct of monetary policy and all of that. 
There's also other thing to do with protecting depositors' interests, which is guaranteed within the Act mm -hmm. 930. Sure. Uh, but then you want to look at it's not every time that a central bank can come in to bail out. Uh, currently, we're talking about uh, in the range of about 15 to 16 billion of uh, taxpayers' sure. money that have to be used to bail out banks. And therefore, if there were to be um, a deposit uh, protection scheme, which is an insurance kind of scheme against um, uh, 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 losses, against uh, a, a excessive exposure to risk and all of that, uh, they will come in in handy to bail out some of these uh, banks that have gone down to pay deposited funds. Of course, deposited uh, uh, corporations often do not pay out all the uh, lost funds, but they come in to cushion banks in the event that there is uh, uh, losses. And so it is very necessary uh, that these institutions are set up so that the, in, in the event that a bank collapses, the central bank doesn't have to do up so much of taxpayers' money to, you know, pay depositors. Uh, the key question with the depositors' institution... So how is this, how is yeah. this um, depositors' protection body... Yeah. Yeah. How, how will they be able to assist in situations that they need to assist? Yes, it's just like taking an insurance uh, policy. Right. Uh, you insured against your losses, right? And the insurance company will come in to, you know, uh, pay the claims based on how much you have insured sure. against. Sure. So in the event that there are losses, the, these deposited ins institutions will come and assess the situation and then say that, okay, you paid premium of this amount. This is how much you deserve. Maybe we'll take about 20% okay. of the losses and pay out to uh, depositors. Well. So in the... In that case, <coughs> deposited are cushioned to a large extent, but it may not be full recovery, but then right. to a large extent they are cushioned. And I okay. think that is important. I think the key question there is mm -hmm. who should bear the cost of exactly. this Exactly, which is why I was protection. asking. But we'll, we'll, yeah. we need to take a break. When we come back, we'll try to understand exactly what the role of this um, depositors protection um, body is and how you know they can come in handy when uh, the, there's the need to you know, come in what situation would necessarily, you know, trigger their action and how would they act when, 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 when they are to act. We'll take a break. We'll be back shortly. Do you know what this too much data for Vodafone is? Hmm? It's like getting a surprise visit from your crush. Hi! Hi! And then realizing she's a... Hi! Twin? Hi! Only there's even more. Hey. A Hi. whole lot more. Hey. Enjoy too much data from Vodafone with more data on recharge. That means you get 1.5 gigabyte data for 10 CDs, 4 gigabyte data for 20 CDs, and 10 gigabyte for 50 CDs, as well as free Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp when you run out of data. The only thing you need to worry about is keeping your battery up. The future is exciting. Ready? This week, yeah, by ICGC Chapla, our East Legon, Namesa Fuko from PVV, why you cooking competition, yeah, Ebusha Finala, Yebeshani Yedidi, why you watching Nashitana Gary and Natalia, assorted Jolov, and Crofubus was why Gary Photo, Nina Shaye, Asana, Lamujin, in a food drink, I saw two P, you know, it did this week, Yensha or East Legon, Maitre ICGC. Chapuha, Edibana! Edibana shows this and every Sunday at 6 p.m. right here on TV3. Brought to you by Enapa Macro. This week on the Law Challenge, a recap University of Caicos' journey to the finals. What is described as an illegal contract. A contract may be termed as an illegal contract 
when performance of it becomes abhorrent by virtue of a status, by virtue of common law principles, and by virtue of public interest. And that is correct for the full points. I am a person who is broadly defined as one who is interested or has been... Yes, University of Cape Coast, James. Promoters. That is correct. Promoters. The Law Challenge, every Saturday at 2 p.m. on TV3. Did you miss out on any of your favorite TV3 drama series this week? Never mind, we've got you covered. It's the Triple Omnibus, this and every Sunday on TV3. Please don't make a scene about my personal life. I can't tolerate that. Dad, you just have two options. Tomorrow I'll confess in front of the judge that I had murdered those two cheaters. What? So catch up with Till the End of Time from 7.30 a.m. I swear, I told you from the very first day that my daughter was the most important thing in my life. You never told me that I wouldn't have a space in your life. The girl from 10 a.m. You left me no choice. One must have a plan when she told me in a class. Are you not the one that will tell me that I cannot see God like this? My own brother. On the battleground from 1 p.m. Your Sundays just got better. Remember, it's the triple omnibus of till the end of time. The girl and the battleground all on Sundays. TV. Three, first in news, best in entertainment. Me be wo, me be wo. I no pay me sorry, I no me yem. Eh yem me kurr. I no say me go at this way. I go go check it. Me do one of your internet so. Si yari e wo me so nye yari ketua. Na me wo antifiosis. I ne kasa. Ti me be be wo. Ti me sirau. Me ne kai. Emao. Kai no me ba na inji no kai atofom. Do not diagnose yourself. Tune in to TV3 every Sunday at 3 p.m. and get expert medical advice on Vodafone Helpline. Ma, nakane, kaben, so ako wato ka. The future is exciting. Ready? Something new is about to hit your screens. Something exciting, strong, smart, stylish, and influential women. Take a seat as they discuss real trending issues and share genuine opinions. The Ladies' Circle with Real Women, coming soon on TV3. Hi, I'm Dr. Ted Spear, pastor of the Fundamental Baptist Church International in Kamasi, and I would like to welcome you to join me for the Fundamental Hour. As we think our good works will save Please us. join me as we teach the scriptures each and every Sunday morning right here on TV3. God bless you. Fundamental Hour shows on Sundays at 6 a.m. on TV3. Welcome back. You're still watching and listening to The Key Points live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7 and online at 3news.com also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. So we're still having a conversation about the financial sector cleanup, looking um, at um, the year 2019 events of that sector, banking and financial sector, where a number of um, banks had their licenses revoked. Similarly, microfinance um, institutions also had their banking, sorry, their licenses revoked and many others. We're trying to see exactly what happened any lessons learned um to you know um guide that path moving forward i've been or we've been joined in the studio by dr lord mensa he is a senior lecturer at the university of ghana business school you're welcome thank you sir. we're happy to have you and still with us uh, is mr joe jackson also professor mm -hmm. john gachi and <coughs> professor eric or say as TV. So, 
just before the break, the issue about the um, Ghana Deposit Protection Scheme came up. We we're trying to understand, you know, why that that came into being and what it is to serve. Because obviously, deposit is, you know, in 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 in, in having experienced what they experienced in in the past two years, would want to have some, you know, um, 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 comfort when it comes to their deposits. So, Mr. Jackson, this issue about the deposits protection scheme. Let's just understand how it works and does it or does it not offer the comforts that it should offer depositors? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, it works. Most, most jurisdictions, jurisdictions have some form of deposit insurance. But it's important to be clear that it offers insurance to much lower amounts. It doesn't mean that all your money that you put in an institution will be the deposit insurance will take care of it when when it, it happens. In fact, if you if you if you look at it carefully, what happened with the initial institutions that were collapsed into say CBG was actually much better than deposit insurance for the depositors because all their funds were guaranteed. If you have deposit insurance there will be rules as to how to claim some money if your institution goes down. There's typically a cap on the amount, and the cap wouldn't be as high as you would think. So, but it works. It's an insurance scheme, sure. and it works, and the institutions are supposed to subscribe to it. And it's good that the central bank <coughs> has set it up. It will pro uh, provide uh, protection for the uh, smaller depositors. But... Let's not think that it's a silver bullet. It's not. It's only one of the measures that will uh, help in case something happened. But right now, what we should be looking at is, we shouldn't even be, we should be looking at how we will not even get to that point mm -hmm. where we need deposit insurance. Right, when you need deposit insurance, a lot has gone wrong. And deposit insurance is only really for the smaller, uh, depositors and uh, uh, to it's 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 only a band aid it doesn't solve a bigger issue so it's a good thing but there are much bigger issues to be looked at mm. so it's only a, a palliative it's it's so it's, let's, let's, it's, it's let's even get there to let's not even get there let's, <laughs> exactly Let's try to get the regulator up and doing. Up and doing. Be able to detect certain anomalies earlier. So the early warning system is what we should be looking at. How we detect these things early and nip them in the bud even before they get you know, you. The, uh, full blown. Essentially, that's what it is. Let me, um, Professor Gachi, unless you have something to say about the deposit and protection scheme, I would move on to um, Dr. Lord Mensah, who just came in for his perspective. Well, I said to say that it is part of the art. It is it's a provision sure. in the art. We need to comply. That we need, we need to comply. Right. But that was why it was set up first for the microfinance. You remember in 2015, some microfinance uh, institutions yeah. went down. Sure. That was the first solution. So it's a provision in the art, and that is what they are implementing. Right. Yeah. Very well. Doc? Welcome once again. Thank you. Yeah, uh, well, we've been discussing this. I'm sure you you, you you were listening at some point when when you got here. But we next, I want us to look at you know the GAT, the Ghana Amalgamated Trust, because it came in at a point where you know the recapitalization issue came in, and it was for some indigenous banks they struggled with you know that that the the, the, the new um, minimum capital requirement, and so. The Ghana Amalgamated Trust was was established to assist with these indigenous banks who were deemed to be, you know, at least doing well, but just couldn't um, 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 mobilize sufficient funds to meet their capital requirement. And uh, we've had it in place for some time. What would be your assessment of that? Yeah, I think um, the GAT provision is not a bad idea for me. I mean, when it comes to raising of funds to support institutions that are going down, I mean, it's, it's not something that I would throw it off board. But then there are so many questions around the GAT that needs to be answered, mm -hmm. which for me, from the onset, I saw that it's going to give us problems. In a sense that 
if you look at the processes of raising money and then what the money is going to be used for, it's clearly a mismatch. Mm. Now, you can't raise money through bonds, which you have to be paying regular streams of cash flows to investors. And then it turns out that you are going to do all lending in a form of equity, mm. passing on in a form of equity to these banks. For me, I, I, I have problems with that. Because as far as we know, going into these banking problems and all those, they all stand out clearly. The problems were clear. They were asset liability mismatch problems where individual banks, where individual institutions were not able to determine their asset maturities and durations and then also the, the kind of sources where they are getting the money from, how they can match it up with where they are putting the money. That's the, the hallmark of all the problems we are facing in this country. So when the GAT came and monies were being raised to go and support some of these banks, looking at the interest that is being charged, now, in a form of equity, this bond source was promising about 20% or so, right? 20% or so, which is a regular cash flow those investors are supposed to enjoy, be it Ghanaians or be it outsiders. They're supposed to enjoy these fixed streams of what? Cash flows. Now, you are doing on lending, sorry, you are passing on this fund in a form of equity into this commercial banks that have been what, merged together and those who are struggling here and there. Now you ask yourself, some of these companies were listed on the stock exchange, the GSC. Now take a trail of their performance over the past few years. Whether once in a year they've been able to return 20% to their shareholders. Then history will guide you to tell you that you will be able to raise what? You know, pumping this money into those banks with all their problems and then whatever they are coming with, you should be able to raise these returns to go and pay off the bonds. So for me, from the beginning, I'm, I knew very well that <laughs> that's going to be a problem right. because of the mismatch. Because risk management is clear. Mm. We're saying that where you are sourcing your funds is a form of liability. Where you are investing it is your asset. And you need to match up these two. So you can't tell me that you are raising money in a form of bond and you are passing it on in a form of equity okay. and tell me you are secured. No. Mm. Let me throw that to you, Prof. Um, Osnatibe. Do you share the concerns Dr. Lord Nelson shares with us, seeing the mismatch in, in, the, in the gut arrangement? Well, I don't necessarily share that view. Mm. Uh, because uh, I think that you know, in a situation like that, you need to be very innovative. And I think that GAT initiative is an innovative venture. It's a special purpose investment vehicle uh, to rescue some banks that uh, were actually uh, managing the affairs world that we shouldn't allow to go down, particularly this indigenous bank, sure. right? Um, I think initially they wanted to use the pension funds exactly. uh, to, to invest in that to ensure some returns for pensioners, uh, good returns. Uh, that, uh, yeah, I think the negotiations are still ongoing. They haven't come to a conclusion yet. And then they have to think a way out that to go into the market to raise debt and then raising debt and investing this debt into these uh, banks as equity shares. Mm -hmm. Now, these equity shares have time limits over some period of time, within say five, 10 years, they have to you know, right. uh, exactly. pay back. By which time the expectation is that these banks would have been able to clean their books, would have been able to recover a significant amount of assets that were deteriorated. And so they, they do a lot of plow of, uh, backs and all of that. But now, the, the key question concerned. is how is that investment? But it's concerned, that look, investment look at their past records. They haven't right. been, he talks about the fact that check and see whether they've been able to make such returns for their, you know, shareholders. shareholders. No, 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 but when, when were they set, set up? The, this process, in fact, for many of the banks, they are now setting up the, the, the boards and other things, reconstituting them. It's a process uh, that, you know, the banks the are, are expected to mm -hmm. make returns, pay dividend. This dividend will be used to pay 
the debt holders in, in a way that, that it returns. Mm -hmm. Over the five, six, six year period, when these bonds retire or mature, then the, the, the banks actually return the, uh, this amount. <laughs> now, we cannot prejudge. I hear the size no, on my yeah. left. <laughs> I, I, I think sometimes yeah. we have to provide support. Sure. You know, we don't have to be overly <coughs> pessimistic about initiatives. How do we help them to work mm. and work better? Because they came to save a situation, mm -hmm. which, which is very necessary. Somebody has to think out a, a solution. And the solution at the time, Come to think of it, about five banks or so, these are all indigenous right. banks who were actually running well, but right. for some reason they were in, 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 unable, unable to, to raise that. the capital right. uh, that was expected. Right. So this special vehicle, investment vehicle, came up with the idea uh, to try to prop them up uh, by raising debts. Right. So how do we ensure that these banks run well? And are While able we to are able to yes, make back. Make back. You know. So let's be more optimistic and support the system rather than be <laughs> pessimistic. I, I, share, I share the yeah. view about being optimistic, but right. I'm also concerned as to how our taxpayers' money will eventually. Yes, that, that be is why used, we all need to play a role to, exactly. to ensure that this system works and works better for Very all well. of us. I think you want to make a quick. No. Uh, yes, a quick. And a quick I come. I will come to. There. My left side. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, to make these are banks yes. that were struggling. Mm -hmm. Where you have sourced the bond from, they are expecting their uh, sure. you know coupons mm -hmm. every six months or every year. Mm -hmm. These banks were struggling, so the best would have been the GAT source should have been equity. Mm. So whether it's taxpayers' money that we we'll use to buy, you know, just capture part of what shareholders within within those companies. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been the best the situation best. for us, rather than, you know, issuing bonds well, and then converting it to equity. Mm. It will make sense. It doesn't make sense for me. Then. Professor Gachi, you talked about the rules-based approach and then the principle-based <laughs> approach. Looking at GATT, that perhaps would be applying the principles-based approach, right? Because really, if, if we're, we're trying to help these banks and looking at their current situation, we're saying, well, we're doing this that despite the odds. That would be taking a major risk, wouldn't it? Well, I think from day one when the cleanup started, uh, I indicated quite clearly there was the need to save indigenous banks. Sure. So I have no problem if we put an arrangement to save indigenous banks. Of course, that feeds into <laughs> my thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do know that there are other ways by which we can uh, save the indigenous banks. Uh, you just look at uh, the money we have spent already. If we were to take the decision that we are going to save indigenous banks, we would have spent that money to save them a long time. Are you sure? I'm you very sure. But let me looking at let, looking at the kind of the, 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 the content facts. of the reports let, we we let, got let from the now, of Let me now come to uh, uh, that. But I want to discuss. Uh, got from two perspectives. Right. So I'll deal with phase one and phase two. Uh, my colleague, uh, Professor uh, Sive, said the banking sector is highly regulated. That is true. That is why when you go to Section 9D of Act 930, it is very clear you cannot use debt, borrowed money, to capitalize any bank. Right. That is the first principle that GATT has actually gone against. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't allow that. Mm -hmm. If it were to be Are easy, so? if it were to be easy mm -hmm. to borrow money to capitalize, some of the banks would have, done that, bank would have yeah. done that long time ago. So why will you go against the law mm -hmm. in the interest of others? Nobody say we shouldn't save Indigenous banks. So they're using the principles-based approach. It's then. not princi <laughs> principle-based approach. That's not mean you should break the law. They break the law, sure. Because some banks would have capitalized if they were to be allowed to go to the market to borrow. Mm. Banks have That's been right. borrowing <laughs> sure. and doing online. They could right. have done that, but the rule is that you cannot capitalize a bank okay. with a borrowed fund. It's very clear. So by, that is why is they were converting it to equity. Or by a private sector. That is why they were converting it to equity. You see, we see they, they, they are borrowing. Mm -hmm. the, the borrowing is to the Theory bank itself. Support. Don't worry, the, the bank does not support that. as equity. Mm -hmm. But a private eye can take money as a private person mm -hmm. and invest in a bank 
bank shares. It's, it's my liability. So you allow me, let me finish. So that's what allow me, let me Unless finish. you're looking at the GATT as a private entity. Yeah, it is. I but mean, there, there is set up. There is more or less a private entity. That, that, is, a that is another entity. dangerous mm -hmm. aspect right. of the, of the, of the GATT. See, because initially, GATT wanted to use pension funds. Exactly. Now, if you take UMB, for example, SNIT has shares there. Now you are going to take pension fund to come and dilute the shareholding of of of, uh, of those who are managing pension fund. It doesn't make sense. See, so uh, we went through the GATT process. Of course, it was approved by Parliament, which, in my opinion, it was not right, but it was done. Then somebody went to court. That no, the approach being adopted to raise fund for GATT. And, and, and the fact that there is a preferential element, and preferential element, like uh, Dr. Um, uh, yeah, was saying, it's just like a, a, a fixed income, fixed instrument. income instrument. So what it means is that you are pinned down, whether you are making money or not, yeah. you are supposed to be paying the interest relating to the preferential. These are banks which are down. Why do you we expect them to get money to be doing that? So when we are explaining this thing, we are explaining this thing based on, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, corporate finance facts. Uh, uh, please, okay. can I come in here? No, when you are talking about this Please just take notes. I'll come back to you, definitely, because... So you, you that, is another, this, yes. uh, that is another you. problem. Sure. And then there is a, a call option uh, aspect to it, uh, which meant that they could exit any time. And that is another danger for the bank, because, you see, the purpose is to save them. Mm -hmm. So the purpose is not to go there and then strangle them. But that is how the arrangement of banks seem to be. Now, recently, recently, but bear in mind, nobody is against saving indigenous sure. banks. Is it, is it that approach yeah. you yes. said it's an, it's an issue? So recently, I think before Parliament went on recess, there is a revised GATT that went to Parliament. And when you read the document, there is inscription on the document secret. So that's why you and I didn't discuss it. And what, what, what is the revised uh, GATS basically about? It's about taking, respecting Section 9D of the Act. So now, they attempt to say that they are not going to use borrowed money, mm -hmm. but now Bank of Ghana, uh, Security and Exchange Commission, National uh, <coughs> Pension Regulatory Authority and SNIT mm -hmm. are the one going to provide the fund. The fund. So what it means is that if you take the matter to court, uh, after I'm no more using that. Mm -hmm. So that is the phase two of the of GATT, GATT. That now GATT will operate with all those draconian uh, 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 provisions, but now the source of fund will now respect yeah. <laughs> Section 90 of Section the, 90 of the uh, Apart from, apart from, which, which the, act, apart from yes, the act, basic financial management <laughs> principles <laughs> tells sure. you that it was a non starter. Right, quickly I mean, to Mr. Jackson. You have you used on this. See, for me, it's when GAT started and, and they talked about it, it looked innovative, etc. But the bottom line is, as we sit, who has paid the bill? It's the taxpayers' money. The taxpayers' funds. I mean, I, I would be okay if all this process end up with somebody else paying the bill. Sure. But, I, I, you know, you, we, we, can, we can desire to save them as much as we want. We can desire for as much innovation as we want. But ultimately, as I said today, someone has paid the bill. And the person who has paid the bill is the taxpayers, is the, tax, is, is the, is the public person. And so, it's easy to make all the nice arguments. Bottom line, we one prepared. more time, the taxpayer has taken a hit. And that should concern us. Mm -hmm. Because if these institutions have been mismanaged, and they have a history of mismanagement, and we've used taxpayers' money to save them, the taxpayer has a very poor record of correcting these institutions that have gone bad. But can we say for the for the, 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 the banks that qualified to go under the guts, could we say that they were mismanaged? Are they are they are they have, those are one, they part have, of those who were mismanaged? Question. If they were so well managed, 
given that they were given over a year to raise money, what was the failure? See? But the difference is raising. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, listen to me. Oh, the listen to me very carefully. Oh. Raising, in raising if funds so, to meet the recapitalization target if, if, does not necessarily mean that you've been you you miss money. Hello. If the business is good, the strategy is good, the ma 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 management is fine. Because remember that part of this whole process was that you could raise what we call tier two capital, which meant that you could actually go for some its debt. But it's 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 long term debt and give some, some space and give you some space. Hmm. So see you see that, that uh, another aspect mm -hmm. of this whole thing is about Doc, I'll be coming to you. Is, is, is regulatory <laughs> fairness. Mm -hmm. Now what GATT has eventually done is that is that prolonged the period of meeting the Thank minimum you. capital right. for right. these five banks. Right. Now why is it that you collapse? Some banks which were not able to meet the minimum capital. And then you are and who selected who should go to GAT <laughs> and who should be outside. Then that. you have selected some banks under GAT. I think you see this no, point no, let, that you raised. No, I think no, this point no, that you raised no, brings no, into brings no, brings no just a minute. Why, you're not allowing me to. No, 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 no. I think you're making a good point, but I just want to say that yes. I think there there's should we distinguish between the need to recapitalize us against those who had to go down because of certain um, misbehavior. Misbehavior. Yes, I think that distinction yes, needs to be made. Correct. You see, that was the point right? I was uh, making from the, okay. in the initial sure. decision. I think so, that distinction needs to be made. So I think what GATT has done is I think to this regulatory unfairness mm -hmm. uh, in the system. Some of the banks collapsed, per the announcement Bank of Ghana gave, they were not able to meet the minimum capital mm -hmm. by 31st December 2018. Mm -hmm. But as we speak, the new approval in Parliament for Phase 2 of GATT uh, GAT is what is going to help them to meet the minimum capital, which means they are giving another one year in, I mean, in disguise. If that one year were given to maybe Others. another bank, which was left with just about 10 <laughs> mm. About uh, one million or two million. Can, can I? Can I? Can, can so I before come you in? come in, let me go to Doctor Osasuke <laughs> because he has had to. Yes, Doc, you had an issue to raise in respect of the the, the, the submission <coughs> Professor Gachi was making. Yeah. Yes. Um. Really, I mean, first of all, he yeah, you, you thought it wasn't. It wasn't in. Um. It wasn't contrary to Section 9D of of Act well, 913. I, I, right? I don't think so because that provision there was for the bank itself to raise in debt to. Another private entity. Not Who, is private Who is the bank? Investing in the bank. Mm -hmm. At this so point, the bank is a shareholder. Because it's a shareholder who is supposed to capitalize. Mm -hmm. So if you, God becomes a shareholder and is capitalizing with debt, what are you doing? Mm. Well, that's a source, by, by source of finance. Okay. <laughs> I have a source of finance. The, and the, that source... The, the, the central yeah. bank mm -hmm. has continuously frowned on you going to borrow Oh, well, well come yeah. use it as, yeah, it, yes. it depends on where you're borrowing the money from, of course. But the first is, okay, carry on. You know. Right, so <laughs> the, the case that was making that many of these banks were or not being run well, and therefore the central bank has had regulatory unfairness, you know. I don't... No, I didn't subscribe. say that. What I said was, you see, there was a timeline for all the banks to meet the minimum capital. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we have given some... Um, uh, the deadline was stuck yeah. to in respect of some, yes. and with this, there's a disguised extension. Mm -hmm. That's Excuse what you're me. saying. Sure. Uh, the point I'm making that would have been a short period of mm -hmm. time that GATT gave up to right. August. Mm -hmm. uh, up to August. I think they gave them three months up to uh, March 31st March. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now in January 2020. Mm -hmm. That was not done. Now, what the point I'm making is that if GATT was so potent to do that within the period given it. That would have been nice. But now it's over one year. There are some, some of the banks which were uh, uh, revoked, their licenses were revoked basically because they couldn't meet yes. the minimum sure. capital. So they, they some even surrendered their licenses okay. yes. because they couldn't meet, meet the minimum right. capital. So that's the so point they were I'm not making. You see? They surrendered sure. their licenses. Well, they decided uh, but, voluntarily. Yes, right. but so at least they were not mismanaged because they were able to meet their yes. liabilities. Because uh -huh. they couldn't meet the uh -huh. minimum right. capital. Uh -huh. So if yeah. you can extend minimum capital deadline for a bank, some bank for one year, why not for others? Why, why couldn't give the other justice money? Right, sure. That's well, the point I was making. 
So no. Well, we, we, I think we have to unbundle the issues and look at each bank's specific issues. I think for if you even if it is one we, bank that has well, that has let, the possibility let, of, let, let of uh, raising today. extra Ma money to submissions. meet the minimum capital, it is unfair. Mm -hmm. That's the point I'm making. A, a regulator let, should let, be let, fair. Look, your, your point is your point is made. Yeah. We, we we get that, but don't carry on, please. <laughs> I think the the, the 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 brain behind that being set up one was largely to protect the, in some indigenous uh, companies or banks right. uh, from going down. And many of these banks so bear in mind that their shareholders were principally government. And therefore, it was for government, uh, 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 it was the, on the part of government to raise equity for these banks because they are the principal shareholders, majority shareholders in many of the banks. Okay. If the bank, the central bank is unable to do that, it has to think out a way uh, to raise that capital for these banks. So the motive or the idea of protecting indigenous bank, the fact that these five banks, if you look at their books, they were not banks that could be classified as running down their banks. They have very good books, mm -hmm. very highly solvent. Their capital adequacy ratios were good. The, most of them, the only problem was the fact that they couldn't do the then, minimum. Then, prof, if the books <laughs> were good, wait, wait, wait. then I believe, 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 additional capital because that is being raised from a different mm -hmm. from the shareholder the shareholder could be unwilling mm -hmm. to put in extra funds although you are good. managing your bank very well if the shareholder is unwilling to commit further More, funds you, yeah you and so you will be yeah. unable to meet the minimum capital and you could go down in mm -hmm. that regard so given these situations mm -hmm. where these banks were being managed well the finance ministry decided it necessary yeah make it necessary to have a special uh -huh. purpose investment again. vehicle uh -huh. to, to, to uh -huh. prop them, to make sure they stay in business. Right. And I think it's an innovative you know, initiative that has to be supported. I right. Mean, I mean, we, we, we need to bring this gas discussion I, I, no, to, to an end, but to, quickly. Yeah. 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 But you see, Pro the question I asked <laughs> earlier about, you know, Mr. Jackson, you raised the issue about they being mismanaged, and I said, really, is yeah. that the case? Yeah. I think we need to look at it. You, the fact, it? I think Mr. Is it Dr. Elsie has raised the issue about the need for further funds to be pumped in. Yeah. That is where the issue is. Yeah, it's not necessarily the issue is. that you're you not managing well. You see, you you see, you see, and these are two different things. Are you saying? Wait a minute. 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 Let's have some order, please. Yeah. Great. Let me go to Dr. Lord Mensah. Make your son. Yes. Prof, I do share with you that, you know, a bank might have good books. I mean, the balance sheet would have been balanced all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then in the end, shareholders might not be willing. Mm -hmm. If shareholders are not willing, I mean, what prevents you from going outside to dilute their shares? Exactly. You can easily do that. Now, let's put that one aside. Let's understand that the banks that had problems in terms of meeting their minimum capital requirement can be categorized into two. Mm -hmm. You remember before the 31st December deadline, Bank of Ghana came in. And if you listen to the governor's statement very well, it clearly tells you that some banks started illegally, started without capital. Yeah. Some, the persona, the person behind the bank does not fit for what? A purpose. So if you put all this into perspective, you will, those are banks that the regulator can say, okay, fine, I'm coming in to crash all of you within yeah. the, before the 31st deadline. Then there's another set of what, bonds that the and books that are good. And that is because you didn't meet the minimum capital requirements. Uh, no, it might not. Yeah. Be, it's not necessarily so. Sure. The books were good. Mm -hmm. Everything was good. But they lacked the capacity to yeah. raise money. Okay. Lacking the capacity to raise money means that the books might be good, but there may be the shareholders don't foresee good future. Yeah. Now, who are the shareholders in this country? <laughs> Currently, your books might be good, but what, what's the future telling me? I might have my shares hanging in there, 
Maybe it might not necessarily be exactly more than 20% of my total investment in my life. So let me keep it hanging in there. But you know, you're speaking the same language as Dr. Sassi, <laughs> which you earlier on were. Yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not, I'm not hold on, okay. hold on. Mm -hmm. I might keep it hanging in there. But it does not mean that if you want to float in more shares as a shareholder, I'm prepared to pay, to, to invest. What prevents me or a manager or a bank to go outside? Because once you propose to shareholders and they are in one, you. because your no, final, corporate finance says that give them preemptive yes. right in your every issue that you, you are coming to do. You and it was a regulatory right. issue. Exactly. Yes. So in the end, you can go outside to go and raise money and, and come and dine with somebody from outside. They were not <laughs> I have a few questions. <laughs> okay. Well, exactly. Okay. So yeah, yeah, the point and, of, and, and this yeah. will be the last round for the guts. So we'll see, move on to the, men's gold. The, the, point Another are, hot spot. the point is that. Mm -hmm. See, when it comes to shareholders, government as a shareholder fall under the, the regulation. Sure. So you can't say because it government, is government. So, so that is why I'm apply. doing ABC. No, that's why we shouldn't entertain sure. it. Not at all. Of course, I'm emphasizing again, I am for protecting indigenous banks. Sure. But where we have the thinking that because it's government, that is why we decided to behave the way we are. Yeah, no, mm. that, that is Definitely. not correct. Definitely. Because yeah. even some, some of the, the banks we're talking about, they were not government has uh, shares, they are about uh, equity interest of mm. about 90%. Mm -hmm. But they could have done something about that to raise uh, shares. Mm. So I think uh, we, right. we need to respect the regulation. Sure. It is the regulation that was used to deal with the whole issue that we are discussing here. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't get to a point where the regulation is overlooked mm -hmm. and then we are doing something uh, different. Right, very well. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we need to take some no messages. The law. <laughs> we need to take some messages. This one is coming in from um, Simon in um, Gorogo Tongo. He says, good morning, Ghanaians and the panelists of TV3. 2019 has been a very difficult year. For the ordinary Ghanaian, a year coupled with high uh, speed of killing, kidnapping, corruption, increase in fuel prices. It is a year that threw people out of their work, from owners of banks to the cleaners. Sanitation was a big issue in 2019, and the government uh, has failed woefully in addressing that. Ebenezer Siedu says, our Ghanaian leaders have to change their mindset to look at issues the government rushed in the banking sector cleaning, thereby causing a lot of harm than good. And, and he says... A case in point is increased unemployment. Then he goes on to the communication service. He says, my question is, if every Ghanaian is taxed 9% tax on telecommunications, then why do we still need loans? And why are we still not developing our infrastructure sector? Um, this one says, um, emphasis must be made um, of the fact that the ill-fated outcomes of some of these banks did not begin when the NPP assumed power. This government cannot be held responsible for the mess bequeathed to it in 2017. Any decision contrary to the cleanup exercise would have proven more calamitous to um, the forward march of the banking sector. That's coming from Citizen Francis. Good morning, Professor Gachi. You always make economics simple to the understanding of the ordinary person. The government should put its um, wits together and solve the financial sector problems once and for all. That's Linda in Ofwasi, Ayurebi. Um, this one is coming in from Mutum for he says he's a convener of Crossfire Ghana. He says um, the closing down of the banks was the closing down of the banks the only remedy left. America went on recession and did, did they close down banks? Why did we do a different thing here? Why, for instance, was Heritage Bank closed down? Um, Emmanuel Agleta in Ho says, I believe the financial cleanup by government was a step in the right direction. The only challenge is whether those who undertook the cleanup used the right approach. Let's learn to do things right. Quite a number of them coming in, but I'll take two more and then we take a break. Alhaji Hamza in Pig Farm says, I've now, truth be told, the Bank of Ghana and for that matter, government has done more harm than good in the cleanup exercise. Uh, we have lost our local banks and jobs, and this does not make sense to me. Donatus in Kumasi says the regulator did not help um, us, the depositors, at all. Since the revocation of the licenses of the savings and loans in September, most customers have still not received a CD, and they are saying the financial sector is doing well. I will not advise 
even my enemy to invest in savings and loans. The financial sector cleanup, according to the Minister for Finance, came to an end. It was um, a statement was issued to that effect sometime in August this year, and um, after that cleanup, nine universal banks had their licenses revoked. 347 microfinance companies also had their licenses revoked. Out of this number, 155 had already ceased operations. 39 microcredit companies also had their licenses revoked. And out of this number, 10 had already ceased operations. Uh, 15 savings and loans companies also suffered the same fate. Eight finance house companies and two non-bank institutions also went down the same road. So when we're looking at the financial sector cleanup, we're not just focusing on commercial banks. And that's a point that uh, Mr. Joe Jackson raised during the break. And so we'll be, we'll, before we move on to the men's gold issue, which was also a big issue in 2019, I think we need to bring in the fact that, yes, let's not just focus on the universal banks. And you had an issue to raise yeah. this. So just and, and, and your summary illustrates the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. You know why? You left out the 52 oh, SEC yes. regulated companies. Forgive me. Yes, exactly. Forgive me, yes. <laughs> yes. The point. That's you true. left out the 52 sure. SEC regulated <laughs> companies mm -hmm. that were also collapsed. And there are a number of things that mm -hmm. have, have gone wrong there. These institutions were holding $8 billion mm -hmm. in assets. This is according to SEC. Right. Some of them were huge. Some of them, SEC tells us that as much as three billion was put into one, uh, ninety-nine percent was put into an unregulated institution. SEC tells us that a lot of, uh, uh, we found out that a lot of these institutions, even the contracts they had with their depositors, were illegal because they were promising fixed returns when they were not allowed to. Everybody's going silent. The institutions have been closed down, receivers have been appointed, a certain social intervention to, to uh, uh, ameliorate the effects has been promised, nothing has happened, and everybody's gone silent. That is an issue we should talk about. Sure. Because the money at stake is actually bigger than the money at stake. It dwarfs men's gold. And there's no deposit protection of any sort. So. If the receiver can't recover, you're not getting any money back. That's it. Well, and uh, if we look at the, uh, um, the uh, what do you call it, the history of receivers in, 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 uh, in this country, even in, in, in sectors where and in institutions where uh, the, the, the record keeping, etc., was better and clearer, the prognosis is horrible. And they are pensioners. Etc. Uh, welfare institutions, insurance churches, companies insurance there. companies, and everybody is keeping that money on their balance sheet as if the money is still there. But I suspect that money, at least or at least substantial part of that money, is gone. And we have to talk about it. Definitely. And we have to deal with it. And, 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 and if, uh, it, the surprising thing is how much talk was generated over men's gold. And I know. How very little talk is being generated over yeah. 8 but, billion CDs right. that seems to have gone down the drain. And, and nobody's talking loud about it. But it clearly raises issues about regulation again. Earlier on, Prof talked about the fact that, I mean, you know, the regulator would tell you, three months before an action is taken that, well, this, this, this entity is okay, you can do it. And then subsequently come and issue a statement indicating that, well, that company really and truly is not, you know, in, in good standing. Question is, what were, what, what were yes, you telling us yes, earlier on? in particular, mm -hmm. has to be held responsible. Mm -hmm. SEC, admittedly, earlier, very early in the year, read listed some companies and said these companies were in trouble. Mm -hmm. So if you went to their website, you see that these institutions were in trouble. Unfortunately, after that, it now issued a statement saying, but you can still take money to them. Then a few months later, you come and yank the license and say, these institutions are in the wrong. That's that, that, horrible. That clearly. That's <laughs> awful. Dr. Zaysi, did I hear you make, you know... Uh, well, well I, I was to going to... Uh, Joe what mentioned the fact that nothing has been done to this uh, sure. deposit. I just want to say that these are not depositors. 
these are investors. Mm. And their treatment is very much different from depositors. For investment, it's a venture. There's risk attached to investment. You can gain, you can lose. And therefore, I do not expect government to treat it in the same vein as it has treated with the banking sector, which collect deposits. Of my, course challenge, we can, my challenge here yeah. is this. Men's gold was even illegal. And yet, look at the amount of uh, 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 noise it generated. Mm -hmm. These institutions had a regulator. And if we admit that the public in Ghana it has such poor uh, financially, financial literacy uh, uh, education that some of them don't even know the difference between a bank, a finance house, uh, 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 a sec regulated company, uh, a men's gold. It's horrible. It's I, do, I do appreciate your point, but I, don't you think that uh, the men's gold issue gained that level of magnitude of traction because of the customers themselves and how aggrieved they were so they mobilized they were making all you know sorts of statements that's going no, that's, on demonstrations that's the because they were constantly in the our customers state. were told clearly by some you're of on us on this platform that you're on your own mm -hmm. again doctor, what doctor uh, uh, professor cb is saying is that guys if you had money with a sacred regulated company you are on your own mm -hmm. and that is what we should emphasize that they are on their own <laughs> so if they should agitate us much as <laughs> I, I, because they're on their own. <laughs> I think we need to moderate these aspects. Mm -hmm. You see, when you are investing in SEC regulated institution, mm -hmm. you are not on your own. There is a SEC. There is a SEC. And it is a requirement of SEC to protect investors. Well, I mean, that, that's Therefore, what period, yes, all the mechanism put in the SEC law to utilize to protect investors might be utilized to protect investors and, and when uh, they are not sec ought to be brought to book when, when when they are not it is the duty of sec to be proactive and engage the public so the idea that when you invest under sec regulated institution you are on your own I think we need it's to not not, it's not, not, I not necessarily. With that. I agree with that. No, no. Yeah. I agree with that. That's my Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're not saying that the investor is on its own. Of, of course, SEC has been set up to protect investors' right. interest. Okay. But in the event that the the in, the Eleven fund goes the, go bad. bankrupt, there's a limited role that SEC can play. There's but no that's, deposit. That's limited rule. The yeah, there's limited yes. rule that SEC should fund money to pay investors. I haven't seen that anywhere. That's not what we are saying. So but these are the, it is the, the duty bank, of SEC. The SEC rule is to come to out before the harm is before done. Before the harm is like done. Yeah, so is that we can admit that bank mm -hmm. the SEC has had some regulatory yeah. failures mm -hmm. in, 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 in that sense. Mm -hmm. Because most of these issues, weakness came up when men's gold issue actually Caught their attention, exploded. exploded. Mm -hmm. Then we begin to delve deeper into the the sec, you know, mm -hmm. regulatory framework you know, and whether it has yes, actually been able school. to. But, but <laughs> let, me, let, let me finish. <laughs> no, it but, started biting. It started doing yeah. the right thing mm -hmm. by coming out to revoke some funds management institutions or companies so that exactly. believe that it is no longer in good standing. Right. Of course, it could have done that much earlier. Mm. Okay. Now, what depositors or investors should make sure it happens is that SEC is able to, as much as possible, that the receivers, you know, recover a large amount of assets. Mm, yes, you know, that's so that they can, because they, they are residual yeah. claimants. Yes, that's the point you know, I they are wanted to claimants. emphasize on. Sure. Yes, because so that has to be done. See, those entities so that have assets investors right. could get that, their money. that we can realize uh -huh. and yes. at least cushion investors. Uh -huh. Yes. But when we put done. it bluntly that SEC has very limited role of mm. course that will be ceded to the registrar general to ensure that the receiver is appointed they realize yes, that, 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 that sure. but has to be done all hope is not lost well, yes let's see let's yeah, see how I that goes quickly yeah, yeah but uh, no, no, let, 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 let me okay. let me come here with this uh, <laughs> issue of uh, second mm -hmm. let me tell you those investment or finance houses right all those who were investing there, they knew their risk levels. Did they? They do. <laughs> do. Let me come in here. Mm -hmm. Under no circumstance will you be seeking out higher interest rates mm -hmm. without necessarily mm -hmm. looking at the risk that goes with it. That mm -hmm. is one side. Now, 
A typical example is, I know very well, some few people, right, who invest with these finance houses. Mm -hmm. And what they do is that at the end of maturity, the, the maturity period, they go for a check of their principal and a check of their interest for the check to be clear in their accounts before they go and reinvest it back in the finance house. So they knew. Even take loans. In a way, they took upon the stress testing themselves, stress <laughs> testing the companies. <laughs> But Making they, they sure were, that the, the company has money, the, the company is investors. But how many so, of yeah, these people? I'm telling you, these are not so people who, are, who understand the investment dynamics. But they knew what they were doing. Mm. They go in there, take the check of their principal, take the check of their interest, invest it, right? And then they make sure that it clears. Sorry, go and put it back in their accounts. They make sure it clears just to stress test the financial company. Before, you know, so we cannot say that they didn't know what they were doing. Well, to an extent. Obviously, I mean, that, but we need to understand that, this. That but but how to... did we get here? You know, there was a point interest rate was up where investor appetite for financial instruments started growing everywhere. At the end of the day, people were overlooking real assets like going into farming and all those. All that they were thinking about, let me hold some money, Returns. put them in there, what do you call it? It, it was a And bubble. make some six months. Mm. Yes, it was a bubble time. Mm -hmm. That was when... We got, that's how we got to this point. Now, during this time, the regulator was sleeping. During this time, <laughs> SEC was sleeping. During this time, Bank of Ghana was sleeping. And in fact, some of them were even caught in this act. They were complicit. Yeah. Complicit, yes. So effectively, effectively, <laughs> effect, some of them were even investing in men's gold. And they cannot associate themselves because of where they work. To, me, to, to what has happened, because I see what came for, you didn't know what was happening. And some of them have lost huge sums of money. Sure. So effectively, it's a, it's a national failure. We should mm -hmm. understand that. Exactly. And so if we are we're coming to, to rescue, to then then let's go back and pick coming. it as a lesson. Sure. And yeah. then we, obviously, we, we put things down and then we, we move forward. Obviously, this whole discussion is about lessons learned, because yeah. the, 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 it's, 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 the milk is already spilled. We are looking at how not to get to this point. Again, essentially. But yeah. we need to wrap up on this. And, and okay. Professor Gachi, you have, you have the last word on this. Then we move to men's gold. We've touched on men's gold a bit. Yeah, what I'm, going, this, to but say, we need to what I'm going to say we touch on men's gold also. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. You see, when we go through this cycle of crisis, and if you imagine at the amount of money lock up uh, for various categories of people, institutions, is so huge that some of the institutions, they cannot recover for a very long time. Sure. Individuals have their life devastated. The state will not also recover. Cover for yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, we cannot take that hard line. The state has a duty yeah. to, to, to the public sure. and the people. But that is why we have a government. It may be difficult, but it's a, it becomes a social problem. You cannot see your pensioners dying, no. and uh, you say that you, you should have known. You can't see your institutions uh, money lock up and they cannot be active anymore. Mm -hmm. And you claim that uh, they should have known better. So I think we should now look at it from the perspective of a social problem and see what we can do for men's group, which is not regulated. Of course, we have assets. I think they have started a process like that. Uh, they seize the asset. They are going to rally the asset. That is, so, that is one of the things that the state can do to show commitment to the people. So if the state begins to say that, no, they should have known better, then I think we are going to a very difficult. I, I, I suspect that there will be a resumption of uh, uh, people making noise about... Uh, I, I suspect that people are going to resume noises about... Uh, claim of uh, not receiving their money from the various uh, institutions uh, this year because uh, can, can, can I of course in? people think that it is election year yes. they have to make noise but that is real that should right. be some commitment in terms of the social program that has been created. Right, right. I mean, um, and, and moving on to men's gold, we, like I said earlier, we've been, we've touched on that. Uh, Dr. Lord Mens, I know you want to say something, but yes, yes. we need to wrap up on that quickly. Yes, uh, obviously, I mean, what is happening now um, those institutions that have gone down, even if they have assets and, you know, SEC is supposed to come in, receiver is supposed to come in to ensure that those assets, assets goes to the market so that they generate something to go and pay those who have their deposit with those finance houses and investment institutions. Mm -hmm. We should understand that 
these assets are not going to you know attract their market value mm -hmm. these are assets that are going mm -hmm. to be forced to the market mm -hmm. you know at that point the market might not even need them so most of them are going to be assets that will be undervalued mm -hmm. So the letter that you get, you should just be happy that you've gotten something. And then, I mean, you, you take on. a lesson from that and going forward, you know how to invest. Right. Simple as that. True, but that, that, yeah, but um, that, those are the realities on the ground. And on men's gold, I mean, a major, 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 major headline mm -hmm. issue of 2019. Several agitations here and there by the aggrieved customers. Um, government, you know, like we, we, we stated earlier on indicating that, well, a number of cautions were issued to you know customers of men's gold do not continue <coughs> depositing or making transacting with this entity customers nonetheless continued to engage men's gold mm. and we all know what happened dr oseasibe after all is said and done would you say or how would you assess government's you know, performance in respect of the men's gold issue, looking back? <clears throat> well, I think that we cannot uh, run away from the fact that there was some regulatory inertia and lapses on the part of the regulators, uh, because at a point, it wasn't too clear whether men's gold was to be regulated by uh, the central bank or was actually was going to be regulated by SEC. And so there was a bit of confusion. Or even the Minerals Commission. Or even mm -hmm. the Minerals yeah. Commission. But it also <laughs> was because men's gold appeared to, its activities cut across all these three, you know, uh, regulators. Uh, the fact that it was taking deposits, it was almost like deposit taking. The fact that it was trading in uh, minerals and then people making investment, which comes under uh, sick and all of that. Doc, yeah. please hold your, your, your horses there. Let me quickly introduce um, uh, Dr. George Domfe. He is a development economist and a senior research fellow with the University of Ghana. Good morning and welcome to you. Happy New Year. It's yeah, good to have you <laughs> join us. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and Doc has come to replace um, Mr. Joe Jackson, who has had to take leave of us. So the conversations carry on. Yes, please, yeah. go on. So the fact that they were taking deposits without uh, licensing from Central Bank, uh, making investment without licensing from uh, SEC, mm -hmm. and also uh, minerals, trading in minerals without licensing from Mineral Commission, you know, mean that it was quite difficult to actually pin down the activities to a particular regulator. And uh, all these regulators really did not see uh, the role that they should play in that uh, uh, in the activities of men's good mm -hmm. and all of them sat back until you know the bomb actually blew on our face so for me they have to take some of the blame uh, regulators mm -hmm. and also as uh, dr mensa is saying the, the the people themselves i mean the, the investors also must take some blame mm -hmm. uh, for the fact that i mean in investment you need to do always do due diligence you know make sure that where you're putting your money into you know there's a guarantee that you can recover your money it's very important mm -hmm. uh, crucially important you don't always have to look at the returns you must also assess the risk mm -hmm. because for any venture where the returns is high the risk is also very sure. high and therefore once you are getting high returns you should be ready to also take up high risk in mm -hmm. that regard mm -hmm. so uh, for me what matters is now the issue has happened. Uh, many people have lost their money. The next thing is how do we recover their savings or right. their uh, investment for them? Of course, like I, I always maintain that principle that when it happens this way, government can only be magnanimous, uh, try to protect investors' funds. But the government really doesn't have a direct role in paying back the money. Yeah. Uh, what if government is able to recover s assets of this company, it pays back the sure. amount to them. Uh, Otherwise, the, 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 those involved have to bear the risk and right. then the, the, the right. cost of it. And speaking of assets, um, Professor Gachi, um, we do know that um, at some point, some assets of men's gold were, were um, 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 confiscated. I think during the EOCO, you know, interrogations, we do, 
we, we, we did hear of some assets being uh, confiscated. And so speaking um, in respect of what Dr. Oseasibe is saying, if there are some confiscated assets, we definitely could, you know, get that um, um, liquidated into cash and then have, you know, see how best that could go around in terms of the uh, investors who put their monies there. What, 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 what else could be done in respect of that? Well, I think the major thing is to, uh, if you realize that somebody has involved in the financial sector activity, which is unlawful, there is a role for government to play, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and that should be done. I believe that was why uh, there was an arrest, mm -hmm. uh, prosecution. I don't know where the prosecution has gotten to. Uh, then the other as aspect is the asset. Uh, what asset does he have? Uh, and in this case, you are talking about the asset of the company and the asset of the individual because uh, the person knew what exactly. he was doing, if indeed the person was unlawfully doing mm. the thing. So it is no more, uh, it's, it's not only the about the company. asset of the company, but the asset of the individual and the rest. So that is where government will show commitment. Sure. And, uh, uh, and the, as the other aspect of the commitment, we all do know that the financial literacy level in the country is low. And when we are talking about financial literacy level, we are not talking about educated person. Mm -mm. Because have an MBA, <laughs> yeah, MBA or no. no, we are not talking we, about we, we that. We can integrate that in so many <laughs> things that we do. Yeah. So, be, be, because, you see, our system is such that uh, some of these people, uh, they are fronted or their marketing was done by prominent people. So, you go to a church, a pastor is involved, <laughs> and uh, we know the role that pastors play. I'm saying this because I am aware of uh, pastors whose money are lost, churches who have lost their money in this. So when it comes to that, it becomes very difficult. So that's why I proposed some time ago that if SEC and Bank of Ghana want to ensure deeper financial uh, literacy or education in the country, there is a need to collaborate with the churches because that's why we have the large uh, gathering from time to time. So the key things, you, uh, they can pass on these things to uh, uh, their, their members. So that's one thing that government should do as part of the commitment. Right. And government should empathize. <laughs> because, you see, whether you like it or not, when government is looking for a vote, they stood low yeah. before the people. Mm -hmm. So when the people are in difficulty, why wouldn't you empathize with right. them? Right. So you can't call them names, but sure. the best is to, is to empathize with right. them. Now, you, you talked about the commitment by government. I mean, yes the least government can do is to show commitment when it comes to you know bringing such persons to book you talked about the arrests but it's i mean uh, ioko arrested um um um, um is it um nana pia mensa he was he he was granted bail see, another but, aspect is mm -hmm. we were told that the man won a case in dubai oh yes i'm, I'm coming to that that, I'm, that is that is some money, <laughs> money. i'm coming to money. that but i'm so, looking at the, in fact, the commitment. because that money if indeed is true that money is supposed to come and exactly. reduce the burden of but, but exactly. the Exactly. started paying yes. some customers. Yeah. Right? Well, if that money indeed is there, it's supposed definitely. to come and settle <laughs> uh, Ghanaians. Yeah. But I'm so looking at government has a duty again exactly. to support. Definitely. To bring that money. Sure. If indeed that money is very difficult right. to come. But looking at the commitment of government, which is the key thing you raised, and I'm going back to the EOCO days because he, when he was arrested, we do know that he was granted bail. Mm -hmm and was, you know, had to report on certain occasions. But it was during that period that he left mm -hmm. the jurisdiction and found himself in Dubai, where he was arrested and kept in there for a long time. Cool now, the question that people have asked is, cool mm -hmm. up until the time the, what was, um, Interpol alert came, it appeared that part of the whole conversation or that issue had gone down. Nothing was heard about that until the Interpol alert came. And then we found out that he was in Dubai. So question about the Yoko process and how that was made lax at some point to the extent that he escaped as it were, he left the jurisdiction, somebody who was on bail but was supposed to be reporting to Yoko on certain dates. We didn't hear anything about until... The, 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 the Interpol alert came and we found out that he was in Dubai. That obviously raised issues about how we were going about with this whole interrogation thing. 
You know, uh, of course, uh, people can raise an uh, issue about that. Uh, when you look at the stature of the person we're talking about, uh, he was able to, I don't know how he managed to do that, take picture of the, with, the, with key people in society. So he has been able to convince people that, look, I'm closer to power. So people will be reading a lot of meaning to that. But I think what we are doing here is to see uh, whether there is a way of government making sure that people receive their exactly. money. All those lapses can be, be, be dealt with by the security analysts and, and co. But I think that my, my take here is that they are Ghanaians. They are going through trauma. People spend all the, send all their pension yeah. money that they receive to these places. People are sick. People are bedridden. There should be some empathy to those people. Yeah. If there is a way uh, that government can support number one to pay uh, these people, that should be done. Very well. Dr. Dumpfer, no, how, 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 how should no, we touch it? I'm not talking that, about that, that's how. No, Which is I've, 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 I've explained all yeah, those things. Realizing the assets of yes, 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 what has happened to the assets that were confiscated by Iyoko is coming in. Because if indeed those properties or assets were confiscated, we should see it. Well, that's what government should come to and, 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 and explain to people. But it's, it's exactly as if the, the engagement with the public is not uh, right. forthcoming. But if you look at the, the number of people involved, they're huge mm. you know, across the country. So I think from time to time, some, uh, I mean, uh, communication should sure. be done to, well. to let Dr. us Dumpe, know what is going on. Your thoughts on this uh, men's gold issue? Um, Namwan returned, and there's been several communications about you know payments to the aggrieved customers. But as of now, there's no clarity as to you know when customers locked up funds will be made available to them. How can government assist in this whole process? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let me say Happy New Year <laughs> to my boss, uh, Professor <laughs> uh, Professor CV, and my good friend, Lord. Yeah, I'm also meeting uh, Ampros Gachi for the first time on set here. Yes, uh, um, <laughs> the, the whole thing about uh, men's gold uh, has, has been taken away from, let me say, objectivity discussion, and uh, it became political. Mm. And so whoever that talked about it, depending on uh, the public, uh, where you were coming from, you had, uh, you know, you had that you know, yeah. We all saw that some political parties were even running press conferences <laughs> and all that on the whole thing. And my brother just made mention of uh, uh, him having pictures with the uh, with, with, with top echelon in the society, including even the president. And the president one, I think we all saw it when Christine Entech, I think the, uh, his company was sponsoring. Uh, yeah, the premier. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so they are going to meet the president. And that's when you took the picture. They, and this picture went around the social media to indicate that the president was even part of the whole <laughs> thing. And so you see, when you live in a country where almost everything becomes political, mm -hmm. you know, that is why people like, uh, I mean, Apia Mensa, can sit. You know, the guy has braids. He sat and he, he, he then he looked through the lens and saw that the, there were loopholes in the in the sec and also the and BOG and then thought to come up with something that can neither be regulated <laughs> by the sec or BOG. And you know, you know, he knew very well that once whatever that he I mean what what whatever way and how he does it, he will get support. You know, in this country, it's not about what is right. It's about who did it. And so and now, I get you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, now we are we we are getting people supporting him. You know, even though uh, uh, let let the table turns, and these same people who are supporting him who speak I mean different language. That has been my problem. Mm -hmm. We don't develop a country I mean that way. So that has been the problem. Uh, the guy was smart, and now. Uh, government, uh, I, I think, is limited. I, I don't I know what the government can do because they say they are going to spend 80 billion this year. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this year we've entered a new year. And uh, we all know the challenges that we've been having with the you know, revenue and the mobilization. So I don't see government committing any money <laughs> from, oh, from, from, from. Yeah. I, I, and no, so I, I, there are that, I doubt if that would yeah. happen. I, 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 I know that. that. When I, it comes to the population, anywhere yeah. for that. Yeah, but but you know. we shouldn't forget. We shouldn't forget. They have already enjoyed. And that is the point, I mean, Dr. Lord Mensah was trying to make. 
you know, some of them knew what they were doing, Amen. right? And, and they really enjoyed because yes. their interest was huge. And so they put their money there, and, the and they were really enjoying. Check. So some have enjoyed. Okay. Seriously. That's fine. <laughs> Dr. Mensa. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we need see, to wrap up this, on this and get the, to the economy now. Yes, so. this men's gold issue, right? We've touched on assets. That his assets should be, you know. The company's assets. As the well company's like asset, yes. and it could be the person who is behind the company. I mean, but let's not forget that the asset might be there, but it has no quality. We live in a country where you can buy an asset where you are buying litigation. <laughs> so an attempt to sell it in itself becomes a problem. Yeah. And anybody who is a scammer, anybody who is operating and he knows where, he knows how where to place the money to ensure that you can't even mm -hmm. get it. That is one side of it that with the asset that we are talking about, mm -hmm. asset that we are talking about. Then again, looking at financial education. I mean, that was the fall. Because investors' appetite came up as a result of the high interest rate levels that we're enjoying in this country. That everybody was seeking interest, you know, earning, trying to make sure that you invest in something that... So we forgot, we forgot about going into cocoa farms, going into uh, real asset acquisition. We forgot about that. And over there, the guy also was clever. Like my brother is saying, the timing was good. Because at the time he was coming to the market, the investor's appetite was up there. And he was able to mobilize the necessary funds as quick as possible. But for me, let me chip in this, which I've always been, you know, talking about. We are operating an environment where interest rate is not regulated. But for, for, for heaven's sake, the regulator should know that when interest rate is hitting the roof, it does not make sense. At the point where this company was, you know, promising around, you know, 12% a month, right? Interest rate in this country on the average per year was about 12% a month goes up into 144% a year. So i.e. when you invest, within 10 months you should cover your money and then the rest becomes, you know, by to the end of the year becomes your interest. So effectively, you know, the regulators should sit up. And then information flow across the regulatory bodies. Right. Ghana, we have that problem. Every, you know, regulatory entity is operating as a si like a silo. So we have Bank of Ghana regulating uh, banks and all those as if, you know, deposit-taking institutions are only the target. We have Minerals Commission sitting down there. They don't, they don't even know that somebody can even convert gold buying into investment uh, company. We have a uh, SEC also sitting down. So the flow of information. So what prevent we know that at the point in time we're torn between as to who to, to regulate men's gold. What prevent all the trade to go? And say, hey man, Quite your operations right. falls within mm -hmm. you know any of us jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we are here to regulate you. Let's see what you are doing. Right. Whether indeed the interest rate that you are promising, you have somewhere that you are investing to make sure that you get the money to come and pay the people. Very Nobody well. did that. Thanks. So effectively, so, I think you know, it's the, there was a state failure, definitely. and it's a lesson Clearly. for us, you exactly. know, for us to uh, pick up from there. We're moving on next to look at the economy in general matters um, pertaining to um, the depreciation of the city, the fiscal sector performance, debt to GDP ratio, and many others. Um, joining us in the studio now, uh, taking over from Professor Gachi, is Dr. John Kwekumenta Mauto. He is the Dean of Graduate Studies at the University of Professional Studies, Accra, UPSA. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. And Happy New Year to you. Many other things. Great. So, Dr. Domfe, I'll, I'll, I'll let you start us off on the issue of the economy in general, 2019. I mean, we've had several occasions to look at that, you know, the budget readings and all, we've had discussions here, but taking a look back at 2019, you know, give an overview of the economy, what would you say briefly? Okay, yeah, thank you very much for this um, opportunity. So looking back at two, uh, 2019, I would say that uh, if you compare what happened to what, ha what has been happening since 1957, I would say that I think we've been on track. Uh, we've been doing very well. All the microeconomic um, indicators are, are, I mean, are doing well. Yeah, and what really is, excites me most uh, is the agricultural sector that has picked up and doing very well. Yeah, but when I'm talking about the agricultural sector, I have uh, one sector that is doing badly, that didn't do well at all, that is the fishing uh, subsector. Uh, um, it grew negatively compared to, you know, the other sectors such as crop 
and livestock production. I'm also happy with the crop and livestock production because we are told that is where over 70 percent of the poor are, and therefore, any time that sector does well, it means uh, at least the poor is uh, getting something. But uh, my worry had to do with the post harvest loss. Exactly, I was going to go because to that. I, even though there was bumper harvest, uh, we also told that there was no market, and that brings me back to the manufacturing sector mm -hmm. that has also picked up. Uh, I mean, at least we have seen some green light. If you uh, saw the manufacturing sector grade over, I mean, nine percent is is something that has not been happening, and therefore that was really very positive. And so we need the manufacturing sector to work uh, to absorb some of the produce. I'm talking about the primary products, so that uh, we don't uh, uh, send them abroad in raw raw form as we've been doing. Mm. And uh, talking about the manufacturing sector. Uh, the siblings for that, I mean, subsector. I'm <laughs> talking <wonderful>. about <laughs> the um, electricity, water, and all those did very well. But one subsector at the industrial um, sector that didn't do well at all was the construction. And that was basically uh, government uh, wasn't doing so well with the capital, you know, expenditure. Sure. Uh, all you know, let me say, we did well. The services sector was not bad. And so, let me say that, I mean, the Canadian economy is doing very well. Right, good. And now, uh, you ended with the capital expenditure thing, so I will go to Dr. Lord Mensa with the capital <laughs> expenditure issue. Obviously, the 2020 budget indicates that 2020 is going to be a year of infrastructure, so clearly we're going to see a rise in capital expenditure. Let us, you know, your, your thoughts on that um, as against, you know, the, uh, the need to operates within a certain target when it comes to is it our deficits, right? Yeah. And again, operating within the context of an election year. How challenging would that be, do you think? Yeah, very good. Um, if you look at the budget that was read in 2020, the target is that the fiscal deficit should be about 4.7% uh, to our GDP. And the government intends to spend around 85 billion <laughs> you know, Ghana cities with a revenue generation of about 67 mm. billion mm. Ghana cities, and a def huge deficit of about 18 point something billion. I like my friend, uh, Dr. Donfe. You know, he packaged the economy nicely, I mean, telling us that everything was good. I mean, sectors okay, so that he, I mean, those are right. positives. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I was happy mm -hmm. with those highlights, you know, but as uh, for the first time, I've seen an economy where the driver of the GDP is not the service sector sure. that sure. we know. Sure. It means we are going back to the 90s that we knew our economy being driven by the agriculture sector and the manufacturing sector. I was, I was happy with that. Right. But then the service sector, you know, caveat might be, it be the banking sector cleanup, which we, we, we know, because if you talk about service sector those times, you know, it was mainly driven by the banking sector. Right. But then let's not forget that, you know, we are in an election year. Now, this election year is also post IMF. Sure. You know, it's also post IMF. But now we are off the hooks of IMF. Now, we've put some benchmarks in place, mm -hmm. which uh, for me can serve as a guide and it can serve as controls. I mean, looking at the fiscal council that has been established, right. looking at the fiscal responsibility bill, and all these were all preparations towards how we can get, when we get off IMF how we can protect our own. Because what took us to IMF was mainly financial indiscipline. Sure. Purely financial election indiscipline. Election year Yes, really. and election year. So that the spendings that we do, so this particular year, our spending, how we control it, is going to be a true test of how, you know, we as a country can be independent. If independent, economic independent, let me put it that yeah. way. So for me, um, of course, history is not on our side. History cannot, put, they cannot give us otherwise, because history tells us that every election yeah, year we should overspend. And so, I think this year, right, it's a, it's a true test for us. Government knows very well that of IMF, and remember there was a news that came up yesterday that from IMF that Ghana's debt to GDP is, is get, getting to a level where you know, it's becoming dangerous, mm -hmm. i.e., we are exhausting our borrowing capacity. And if you, borrow, if, you, if you exhaust your borrowing capacity, you go to the euro bond market, nobody will mind you. 
So we have to be careful. Mm. And so, um, well, as to the financing of this uh, deficit, uh, looking at the revenue target, last year we were talking about revenue shortfalls, right? Sure. And uh, myself, I'm trying to understand why. You see, all the incursions the current administration has been doing in terms of its investment in the past, right, gives you the signal that, look, we need to invest to ensure that we increase our revenue generation. One of the projects is digital address system. Another one is national identification card. I mean, it's it, all in a way to identify your own, the resources that you have, so that you can harness, right, in a way to what? Generate from them. But then, the investment now, paperless ports is one of them. All this investment that we've made, have we done the impact assessment to see whether they are building up really into our revenue generation? Well, I don't want. I'm, well, I'm, but not, I'm not tempted that, to, be that, say, those, to say those, that. Those investments, notwithstanding, we're still struggling to meet our revenue targets. And yes, that's we, what I'm saying. That, but sure. I'm driving to a point. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to say that they are not making impact. Yeah. I mean, some people have had cause to suggest that. It's not the case that we're not necessarily doing well with revenue mobilization, but perhaps it's with our targets. Right. So, well, whether you are setting realistic we, targets exactly. or not. Yeah, it makes sense as well. I mean, the target, but targets are being set from history. Mm. You don't set target from space. You are guided by what you've been able to generate over the past years. So you, you, if you, as a technocrat or as an expert, you know, sitting somewhere in the Ministry of Finance, you cannot say that you've made projections and they are not realistic. Mm -hmm. At least they should fall within a certain range. Mm. So possibly we might request for confidence interval around the target. <laughs> you know, going forward, possibly we they say that in the topmost we can get this. At the bottom, that's what we can get. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe sure. that should that should Very be well. able to help us. Well. Anyway. Do, but then we should do well in our revenue generation. Yeah, we'll definitely try because the, a whole lot of investment mm -hmm. has gone into that. Still on um, on our borrowing, I think right. that's something we need to look at. Um, Doc touched on the fact that yeah, the IMF recently issued a statement which has to do with the fact that our GDP to debt, um, debt to GDP ratio is is is, is getting to that was a, a, an alarming uh, stage, and that obviously is worrying because we were in that position not too long ago, mm -hmm. and then we saw a certain downward trend, if you like. Now, if we're going back there, definitely raising concerns. What should government look out for in 2020 moving? Forward in that regard. Obviously, the budget is already mm -hmm. um, um, wow. um, out there, yeah. but definitely, you, but budgets could definitely be revised at some point, right? Well, uh, definitely, because uh, the, the law actually requires the uh, Ministry of Finance to come in uh, during the mid year to review the budget uh, based on the projections that it uh, has done. Um, yes, of course, the debt mountain is a concern, it remains a concern uh, to everybody. Uh, because it started increasing, now we have crossed the 60 uh, percent to GDP ratio. And in an election yes. year, it's very and concerning. Yes, definitely. So um, we, we, we have to be mindful of the rate at which it started rising yeah. now. But what is important for me is to unbundle the debt structure, um, to look at the debt components, uh, the term structure of the debt that we are having. Mm as against what used to be the case in terms of interest payments, interest cost, in terms of the maturity periods, and all of that uh, plays key role in what is it that the monies have been used to do, uh, whether they are self-financing projects and whether they came in to actually solve a situation and all of that. It's very important. Sure. Yeah, so, uh, of course, the, uh, there's this case about the fact that because of the banking sector cleanup, we have added huge about nine per percentage point mm -hmm. uh, to, to the debt uh, to GDP. So when you take that out, we are still within the 57 or 56 percent to GDP, right. uh, where at the point the Ministry of Finance, they didn't want to add that as part of the desktop, but the, I yeah. think Finance Minister actually, the uh, IMF forced it to add it as part of the as desktop of the in, in that regard. What happened is that if the, uh, uh, the receivers are able to recover assets, in, they, they will be able to defray part of this debt in, in that regard. Sure. So, uh, but going forward, what would really, I think we need a very effective uh, debt management uh, framework uh, 
yeah, that would it, help <laughs> us to manage the debt well. Rough, rough way um, we, one, the first solution <laughs> will be that you need to be able to stay within some fiscal space. Mm -hmm. Because the larger your fiscal deficit, the more debt that you add to sure. the dust stock. So, so first and foremost, managing the fiscal space, fiscal prudence, and that will mean that being more aggressive in your revenue generation, you have to be more aggressive. You have to have specific taxes. I mean, I was expecting to see some more specific taxes that have been introduced. Not taxes, but <laughs> revenue <laughs> generation measures. Yeah. Uh, revenue generation <laughs> measures. Let right. me put it that way. But what about the expenditure side? Revenue generation. Yeah, I'm coming to that. I mean, uh, <laughs> let me, let me, let me yeah. I'm, I'm coming sure. to that. Revenue generation, you know, we have to be more aggressive. Sure. We're talking about, we're banking a lot of hopes on compliance and also improving efficiency of revenue mm -hmm. generation uh, from the administrators. Right. These are all very important initiatives. Improving efficiency and increasing compliance, of course, will lead to a tax yield. But sometimes it takes a bit longer for this uh, dividend to come in. And therefore, given our situation now, you really need to have you know, some kind of uh, quick revenue measures that will group in enough. Otherwise, you have to make sure that you match your revenue growth with your expenditure growth. It has to keep at pace with it. So if you're not able to raise enough revenue, then make sure that at all times you keep pace. Your expenditure, expenditure. growth keep pace with your revenue growth mm -hmm. so that you don't widen the... Which, the, the but, but, but that and that is a challenge, challenge yeah. particularly in an election year sure. where there's too, a lot of pressure coming sure. to bear on government and government itself has made a promise to uh, make the year yeah. a year of roads. Yeah. But we could also growth. understand the fact that um, some most of these road and capital infrastructure will mm -hmm. not directly come under the budget. Exactly. Some coming through the Sino Hydro right. okay. uh, projects and then uh, uh, the I is it the the um, infrastructure fund uh, uh, the IFF um, mm -hmm. Ghana infrastructure fund G I I I yeah some of it is come, going to come from there. But what are what matters, and for me, is also very important that we have to also look at is the part of the interest costs and then the interest services uh, regime that we have in now. I think mm -hmm. it's also growing mm -hmm. at very alarming rate. Mm -hmm. And one of it has been the exchange rates. Mm -hmm. the, the, the cost of exchange rate or the, if we are not able to uh, stem the rate at which the currency is depreciating, we were going, the desktop is going to increase, the right. interest servicing is going to increase, mm -hmm. and that will continue to widen the fiscal deficit. Right. And so we have to make sure that in addressing these issues of fiscal discipline and fiscal prudence and also being able to uh, cap our debt stock from rising, the first point is to how to ensure a stable Rate. Exactly. Otherwise, which, we which, will which just be beaten about clearly. it. So they are all interrelated. I mean, one right. thing affects yeah, the other. It's Definitely. It's a, it's a exactly. Yeah. How do we, so on the back of, you know, Dr. Osasibi's conclusion about the need to keep an eye on the depreciation of the city, mm -hmm. your proposals for um, government moving forward, how do we, obviously we know the long-term thing is to do well with our you know, exports. manufacturing, uh, in the, exactly, which would lead to, you know, the exports and all of that. Yeah. But for now, what is to be done? Right. Thank you. Um, Abuna, I think this is the first time we, we are meeting in the year. Oh, yes. It's the first show of the and, year. So. And, and <laughs> I, I, I'll be very grateful if you permit me to use your medium to wish my lovely princess who is four years today. In <laughs> fact, it's unfortunate that... Um, I left before she woke up. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Yeah. 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 Happy, happy birthday. Kafi um, Mauto. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, um, to even address this issue, I really wanted to respond to one, a statement you made, and I'm very happy Prof um, addressed it. Mm. Um, the fact that um, if you are looking at, uh, if, you are, if, you are, if you are capping this year, as a capital project here, mm -hmm. um, then it, it doesn't reflect in the financial plan of the country. But I'm very happy that, uh, if possible, the Sino Hydro project will, um, we, we may meet all our projections, then probably that's what will address the issue. But in actual fact, if you are looking at the budget projections, um, 
I, I, I don't think that uh, the, 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 the rates, the percentage of expenditure that was um, allocated for capital projects, um, we, 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 we can really cap it as the, the year of capital projects. Uh, um, uh, less than 10 billion Ghana cities. Um, that's about 9.8 billion. I, I don't think uh, it, it, it's really um, um, sufficient for um, the, the number of projects we are talking about. And, and in fact, um, the, the, the issue of the, the, the high performance that uh, Dr. Dunfe mentioned, uh, yes, agri has changed our economy. And for that matter, we need that capital project to address the post habit and losses. Now, let's come back to the CD. The CD, um, our currency, um, we know over the years, have always struggled against the uh, predominantly uh, good performing currencies like the dollar, the, uh, the, the pound especially. Um, and, and just as we always know, none of these governments have been able to come out with any magic. Sorry to say any magic. We, we, um, we don't need magic. <laughs> yes. We any, need to do yeah. what we yeah. need to I mean, do. I mean, exactly. I mean, I mean <laughs> that is a contest. Process. That yeah. is a contest. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we've not come out with any serious pragmatic measures mm -hmm. to address the depreciation mm -hmm. of our mm -hmm. currency. Mm -hmm. It's been like that. The traditional, I mean, period. Look, today you could sit here and predict when the city will, will, will depreciate against the dollar. Um, the market woman knows when it will depreciate. In fact, they know better than those of us in the classroom. Mm -hmm. They will tell you that in December, sure. in, 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 uh, um, uh, um, uh, even one, one, one lady um, uh, from uh, uh, a student's mother who trades at Ma Malata Market tells me that in June, expect the pound to perform better than the city. Mm -hmm. And you know what she told me? Yes, you people in big... Um, 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 officers send your children outside. You pay all you, 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 the small monies that we make in the market. You pick them and buy pounds yeah. and then send them outside. How do you expect? Th th those people know. So it's okay. a, yeah. such a person. Um, she will surely hedge against all these losses. They know it better. They know it, they, they know it a practical way. So, so in the process to hedge, you know what happens. They will hide all those currencies and then expecting that they will, they will make some gains. We are still looking at the economy in 2019 and um, trying to figure out exactly what, uh, how things panned out and what the lessons learned are how moving forward, what the projections also are. Um, Dr. Mauto was making his submission, so I'll just return to him for him to conclude and then we'll move on next to... Yeah, so, so just as I mentioned the earlier, yeah, yeah, I mean, just as I mentioned earlier, um, if we really want to address the, the issue of um, our currency depreciating against the dominant uh, foreign, I mean, uh, currencies, then um, we should try our best in attracting more foreign currencies in this country. And um, if if we continue, I mean, as for importation, whatever you do in the short term, until we address some of our domestic you know, um, uh, capability to produce internally and, and have our Ghanaians um, um, appreciate locally produced items. That will only reduce the pressure on the city. Mm -hmm. That is one aspect. However, um, we are not really, we are not really doing things to attract foreign currencies. Let me tell you, you see, um, uh, I, I, I like my Nigerian brothers and sisters. I like the, the, the UK system where everything is business. I come from the university in the community. Um, I know my, all my colleagues here are from the same uh. community. What is our strategy to aid government in, 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 in also reducing that pressure on the city through education? What is the government doing selling our education? Look, Ghanaian education, I'm coming from only one angle. The Ghanaian education is attractive to our colleagues in the sub-region. What have we done? What conscious effort have we put in place to market it in order to attract those foreign currencies? It's, it's a conscious effort through all avenues. Now, our, our, this is just for probably a recommendation to our various embassies. Embassies should coordinate even um, uh, 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 educational institutions to attract foreign currencies. It will reduce the pressure. Okay. That's one of the practical issues. Right. Now, uh, to, to end that, I mean, I mean, this, we, we always say it. We will continue to, um, I mean, I mean, uh, educate our people. 
please, the, 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 the consumption, the taste for foreign consumption. Mm. Let's reduce it. I mean, um, 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 uh, this is our country. Uh, sometimes, let's be more patriotic by saying that, look, for this one, for the sake of our city, I would want to uh, uh, consume a Ghanaian product. Okay. We'll, May see, I say we'll, see, this? How, we'll see how that pans yeah. out. I think that, that really yeah. is an issue. I wonder how that... Yeah. May I say that that's a very issue. valid point uh -huh. uh, with regard to our export <coughs> and also uh -huh. attracting foreign students and all of that. It's really very valid point. But really, what is driving our currency now, those issues do not really play a major role. Yes. For me, for our currency today, what is really driving the volatility largely has to do with capital outflows and sell-offs yes. of our debts. Because over the years, uh, we have allowed foreigners to hold our debts. And the external debt component of our debt strata has grown now more than 50% of it. We then make our economy very vulnerable mm -hmm. to external conditions, right? And also internal, the push factors, the, the pull factors mm. are very mm. present. And so at every moment, your economy is at the vagary of the holders of these things. Right. Yeah. When right. they decide to offload, right. they put pressure on your currency. Yeah. Yeah. So given what is happening in the Fed, in the global market, you've experienced a lot of sell-offs yeah. over the last couple of uh, months. Because the central bank has enough reserves mm -hmm. that it could always have shot up the currency. But the amount of money that is leaving the shores of this country is huge. Okay. And so it is very difficult, really, until we are able to change that the structure of our debt system. You know, very to stem the capital flows, the mm. capital outflows. You know, we are we always going have, to have definitely this have that issue. I, I, it's, it's a big issue. Sure, yeah. Doctor Donfer, I know you also have an issue with mm. uh, the yeah. structure of our debt. You've had cause to to talk about that. Do you share in? Yeah, yeah. In, in, I said that. Doctor Donfer, I said, I said, I said hundred percent, hundred and ten percent, hundred percent. Then, you know, I even mentioned that as we speak, our external vulnerabilities are kept on hold, increasing. Why? Because uh, we are still taking more from the European yeah. bond market. Yeah. We, we, we were not going there until our economy became a little bit beautiful. That is around 2007. And then we, we, we started. Yeah, with it wasn't a bad journey. But if you ask me, maybe we haven't been too prudent. You know, you go for the money, you come, you don't use it well. And so the money is not able to pay for itself. And we, we, we have been compromising the ability of the future generation in, in what? In, in deciding what to do with the resources at their time. That, that's what this seeks to do. If you go to the European bond market and you take so much, you say, I'll pay you 20 years, 30 years, you are compromising the ability of the next generation. Right. And, and, and especially so when you don't use it in a way that they would Itself come to benefit, right. then it is a problem. And so I have a serious problem there. But you know, I think what would help, apart from what I mean, my good professor has suggested, another very good thing that will help uh, is uh, increasing local production, and that's what mm -hmm. you did. You know, I have seen policies now working. Planting for food and jobs. Planting for export and rural I mean, development, and that has brought about the Syria rise and all those mm -hmm. things. One district and one factory. This should be policies that we should all forge ahead in units, and I'm talking about those, I mean, whether you are MPP, I mean, NDC. These are very good policies. Let's try to work and get them to work. Mm -hmm. Now, if these policies work, we should also, I mean, I know that I'm OMCs, take a lot of dollars out every month just to buy what? Refined oil. Now, I'm told that we, uh, every year, I mean, every day we produce about 180 barrels of oil. And, we are, and our consumption is about 80 barrels. If that is true, it means that we produce more than we consume. And one unfortunate thing is that... Are you talking about thousands? Or is it sorry, thousands. Yes. Thousands. Uh -huh. Sorry, thousands. And uh, that, what that means is that uh, we can refine the 80,000 barrels that we need a day. And yeah, maybe sell the, the crude. Do you have the capacity but, to refine? But, but we have been selling all the crude. Because we don't have a refinery. Mm -hmm. 
That that one shouldn't be I mean, a problem at all. I, I don't want to hear we don't have the capacity. It's just planning to build out an, an, an oil world. Refinery. Kwame Nkrumah did it in the, in the 50s, isn't it? I know it's not easy, but we have to work hard at it. Because if we are able to put up oil refinery at Takradi, it's going to create more jobs for mm -hmm. the people. Quite apart from that, uh, uh, the um, OMCs will not travel out there to, to get back. Because yeah. you see, one thing that, that I, I think it doesn't time, make right? economic sense at all is sure. spending millions of um, dollars to ship the, the crude and spending millions of dollars again to import the refined oil. Mm. And when you are doing that, yeah, you, are, you are taking so much oil, uh, you know, of the uh, I mean, dollars out. Mm -hmm. You see, so even uh, if government decides to put up the oil refinery alone, it's going to help the city. The, mm. I mean, this, you know, this, yeah. This, then apart from that, the yeah, one district, one factory yeah. thing must work. I think I've been preaching about this. Oh, no, that, yeah. of this. I think you're an ambassador you know, of that. You see, when you do that, <laughs> you're also creating jobs Definitely. for the people. You know, and that is, and when so many people come to work, what is going to happen? So many are going to pay taxes. And when we get so many paying taxes, revenue mobilization efforts of the government will get to where we want it to be. And that is where we will see Ghana with our aid. Exactly. You know, one thing that, I mean, my professor talked about was the fact that we spend so much, uh, I mean, paying, you know, I'm talking about the debt services. Last year, we spent about 18 billion. And this 18 billion, about half of it is external, which mm -hmm. means that you have to send what? You are exactly. more or less away. Out. You know, if we are able to manage things well, so that we, we don't depend so much on the aid, mm. what it will mean is that uh, you will not be using so much to pay. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and, and that will help stabilize right. your city. Thank so, you. So we can do it. You know, we have been struggling since 1987. And, and some people are saying that we should go back to 1987. You know, from 57 to 1987, we are under fixed exchange rate regime. And so after, yeah. uh, after yeah, I mean, seven, when our financial system was liberalized, then we moved to the current yeah. situation. People are saying we'll go, um, and we should go yeah. back there. Uh, that's not the solution. Because right. that was never able to solve anything. And that was so about it. It's, it's, it's not worth going that, back to. That I wouldn't have time Great. to go there. Thank you <laughs> so for we, that. We, 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 we need to our sit time is We can do it. Almost up, so I'll give you a minute, or in fact, less than a minute each for your concluding remarks, which would we'll definitely look into issue. economic outlook for 20. Which, which issue? You've not given me the On which issue? <laughs> 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 you <laughs> Start us off with that. Start us <laughs> off. <laughs> Start us off. <laughs> concluding remarks. Well, what I would say is that um, sometimes creating a deficit in a budget, you know, in itself is a business. I mean, <laughs> yes, it's a business. Because without a deficit, there won't be financing. And right. without the financing, I mean, you will can't go and borrow from outside and all those. We won't have problem. Everything is about commitment to ensure that, at least for once, right, you can get your revenue closer to your expenditure. Right. Simple. It has Simpli to be. I know it will not Simpli be politically system. wise to do that. But when you are not generating, don't force yourself exactly. to spend. Does it it has to do with the comfort. It gives you more stress. At least, yes. Yeah. It yeah. relieves you of so many You're people. You're going to be well, I, I think that uh, is too in much. the year 2020, I think I want to see the central bank being more proactive in terms of it, uh, dealing in the market. Uh, now I have seen that the, there's a lot of pressure on inflation mm -hmm. to go up, the uh, currency is depreciating. I think that the time has come for the central bank to tighten up a little bit. Mm. The policy rate has to go up, uh, otherwise we're going to see a lot more depreciation sure. of the currency. Uh, to also stem the sell-off, uh, because investors are looking at the returns. With the mm. inflation rising from 7.8 to now 8.2, uh, there is a need for some tightening up yeah. uh, to, to push in the market, particularly as we are in an election year where mm -hmm. uh, uh, election parties are going to spend. There's a lot of money going to be in the system. So the pressure on inflation is very high. So right. we want to see, I want to see the central bank being more proactive and preemptive in its monetary policy management. Very well, thank you. Dr. Case. Mauto, right. for clearing remarks, I'll look for That's 2020. Right. Yeah, all right. Um, for 2020, I just as um, Prof mentioned, I think the entire economy depends on the financial sector. And I, I, I expect that um, our existing um, um, viable banks continue in business. Um, but how do we do that? Um, in fact, um, the, the government should look at how best to address the issue of write-offs. Um, I, mean, I mean, in consonance with some of the new reporting you know, frameworks um, uh, for 2019, um, the, the, the contingent effect of all the, um, the, the, the collapsed banks will, will, will lift its 
ugly eyes again looking at the banks. Mm. And I can tell you that um, a number of them will have to write off a lot of very, very bad investment. And this will automatically affect profitability. They will automatically affect their solvency because um, if once you, re you, you reduce much of oh, yeah. your um, yeah. investment, it simply means that um, your ability to have an adequate capital, to meet your adequate capital ratio, um, becomes is, it becomes a problem. Well. So um, I, 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 I expect that uh, BOG and then the government and the various regulators mm. should try as much as possible to see how best doing. we can address this issue. Very well. Don't forget, don't forget your concluding remarks. Man, man would be too different from what uh, um, Dr. Lord Mensa said. I'm sure they have to be very careful uh, with their expenditure, even mm -hmm. though they, they are talking about 85 billion and they are talking about reaching in uh, 67 billion as you know, and revenue. I trust the finance I'm minister. You've been doing very well. Anytime you see that mm -hmm. we are not getting the, uh, the target, we are not hitting the target, target. He, he revises the expenditure, um, uh, expenditure downwards. I want to see the same thing, but I would be happy to see the revenue going up so that he wouldn't have to come and tell us that he's Revise going to Revise the back. expenditure yeah. downwards. <laughs> we, we, we all hope so too. Anyway, that, 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 touch, eh? that brings us to the end of the conversation <laughs> here this morning. This has been wise. our best touched. show for the year 2020. We started off on a good note and um, I, I do hope you had you know, an exciting time with us. We've had in the studio Dr. George Domfe, also Dr. John Kweku Mensa Mauto. We've also had Dr. Lord Mensa and Professor Eric Osei Asibe. Earlier on, we had Mr. Joe Jackson and Professor Gachi with us. We'll be back here same time next week. Until then, do have yourself a very good weekend and once again, a happy, happy and prosperous new year to you all. Thank you. <laughs>